snap oh snap snap it <laughs> we are live verbal nectar podcast that's right special one today because i got a special guest that's right the legend director james Kermack. how you doing my brother i'm good man i'm good how are you good 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 how are things out there in the uk oh man it's uh it's starting to get warmer so at least oh. we've got that coming you know Okay, uh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, we, we've had snow, then we've had rain, uh, and then we've now got some sun in within a week. Right, right. Copy that. Copy that. All right. All right, we've got the movie dojo army slowly showing up here. Norzoth in the house, the sexy sumo, Orlando. And, of course, movie dojo army, don't forget, if you got any questions for Mr. James Kermack, uh, I will highlight them, and we will get it going here. Again. It's an honor. Thank you for joining the, the podcast today. This is going to be a lot of fun. And I'm already, I can already, I mean, I got a good vibe from watching Knuckle Dust that we're on the same page here, what we like in action, <laughs> in action movies, right? But yeah, I'm, yeah, I kind of like action movies. I think, yeah, we, we can have a conversation. I'm seeing something in the back there also that I'm like, okay, I think we're on the same page there. Is that a Streets on Fire poster? Dude, it's my favorite film. Oh what! No way! Yeah, it's my favorite film. <laughs> I a very underrated uh, Walter Hill film, I think, in my opinion. Dude, we watched it again the other weekend on Blu-ray. Yeah, my fiance's never seen it. It's such a good film. Yeah, uh, it was like a, it was a huge influence on Knock With Us, uh, on the visuals and uh, and the style of film and uh, you know the costume. Uh, it, you know when the lead character walks in his long coat and stuff, it's pure Tom Cody. Uh, right, right. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. That's kind of cool. That's awesome. That's your favorite film of all time. What other yeah. uh, cool movie mo uh, memorabilia you got back there? What else you got back there on the wall? Uh, well, you see, I start. I've got some posters and stuff, but because we're doing so many live streams and podcasts, I'm not used to. It. I had to design a whole part of the room. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we kind of like, um, yeah. I got some lethal weapons, some predator. Yes. Psycho, Jaws, Robocop, See, uh, and then Knuckle Dust memorabilia. That's it. We're, we're friends. We're, we're friends already. <laughs> we're best friends now because of those titles that you just mentioned. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, thanks again for showing up on here. This is going to be a lot of fun talking movies, especially with someone. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm always, I'm a, I'm a knucklehead myself. Maybe I should have been in Knuckle Dust. But uh, hey, buddy, you're there. <laughs> Yeah, give me a fun scene. I'll run in there, get beat up. You know, it'll be hilarious. We need a summer like that. <laughs> oh, man. So is, is everyone gigantic out there in the UK? Is everyone huge? What do you mean? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching this. But I'm going to get into it a little bit later. But I was just like, dude, how many huge guys are in this movie? <laughs> well, those guys are actually the team. We, we got Guillaume, who played Team Stone, and he's like uh, six foot eight. Oh, oh, okay, okay. He's, okay. Right. he's a French guy. Um, okay. So we got him first, and then uh, we found Olivier Richter's, who's seven foot two. I, I it's it's insane. Yeah. yeah. I, I, if I ever run into to Rawbone, I'm gonna show Chat a picture of Rawbone a little bit later. Yeah. If I run into that guy, I'm gonna be running away. <laughs> <laughs> Again, though, as ever, they're the two nicest people you'll ever meet. Figure it figures, right? Yeah. Really figures. good human beings. <laughs> Uh, Sexy Sumo says, he says, I think I like this dude's taste in flicks and memorabilia. There you go. I like there the name Sexy Sumo, so this is good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, um, already here, I'm checking your, your, your IMDB page we got going here. And um, you have a lot of acting credit first before you dipped your toe into directing. Mm -hmm. So I see you, you're in a lot of things here, man. You're in uh, you know, some Doctor Who, Chernobyl. Uh, Chernobyl, Rise of the Foot Soldier 3, uh, and um, 
Miss Pettigrine's Home for Peculiar Children. That's right, with the great Ava Green. Uh, what really got you into acting? What was what, what was some of your inspirations there? Uh, I mean, I trained in acting uh, originally, and so I was acting for like 20 years. Um, oh. But, so basically, before I started directing, I was acting since I was like uh, 18, 19. Um, mainly theatre until I started doing TV and film, which I did for like five or six years, I think. Um, but originally, like, basically what happened was I loved films anyway. You know, my yeah. dad got me into film very early. And then we moved house. And basically the school catchment, I was out of it. So I had to take a couple of months off school. Okay. And the only thing near us was an old video shop. So every day I would go down and they used to do three films for three pounds for three days. And I would just yeah. hit the bargain bin and just ran through films, man. Um, and so watched everything. So it was, it was great. Nice, nice. That, that's usually how it happens, right? Yeah, I think so. Hit up, hit up the bargain bin. But the thing, of, the cool thing about the bargain bin is what people don't know is that sometimes there's hidden gems in there. You oh, know? Man. Yeah, <laughs> there's loads. And then also they're, they're, they're cheaper. <laughs> right, right. You know, back then it was like three seventy five to rent a VHS or something. And then it was like three pounds for three. So Yeah, back, in, back in the day. Uh, Jimmy Freckles says Chernobyl was excellent. So out of all the things that you acted in so far, uh, did you have any uh, a favorite project that you were a part of besides Knuckle Dust? Anything besides you... Knuckle Dust? Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, Chernobyl, so uh, all, all of them good, you know, working on, with great people. I mean, Chernobyl was good because it was a huge show. It's where I met Alex Ferns because um, all my scenes were with him. But the funny thing with Chernobyl was uh, basically Jimmy Cosmo, who had his whole monologue cut from the episode I was in, um, which my first line came off the back of Cosmo's speech. So when they cut that, they cut my first line, and then all my lines went. <laughs> so oh. it just made no sense then to put my lines in. Right. So right. Uh, I just look like this guy who's kind of Alex Ferns' mustached bodyguard. Uh, <laughs> and <behind laughs> the whole time. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's great because I got to meet Alex, and he's a really dear friend of mine now. And obviously, it's an amazing project. I mean, Johan Renk, who, who created it, is a fantastic director. Yeah. Well, as long as you still look like a badass. Exactly. The, I mean, the mustache was amazing. My fiance was not happy, but it's fine. I look like Bronson when I took the wig off. <laughs> but speaking of looking like a badass, look at this guy. Look at that guy. <laughs> what in the world? We got, we got, we got the the McCready here. That's right. The character McCready. Played by yours truly. Played by you. That's right. Looking, looking like John Wick. You can get ready to you ready, bust some caps. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, about caps, to put it, not many kicks. <laughs> about to put it down right there, my friend. But yeah, well, we're going to get into the knuckle dust a little bit. Oh, there we go. More of the movie Dojo Army is showing up. All right. This is a this is a cool day. Thanks again, chat, for joining us today on an over here where I'm at. Early Friday morning, but we gonna make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, I don't want to bug James too much because of the time difference. That's you know, so uh, uh, a brother from another mother, another director that you know, uh, uh, Ranjit Marwa, mm -hmm. and you guys have collabed before. Yeah. That guy, that guy was like, "No, nah, man, don't worry about it. It's like 2 a.m. in the morning. Fuck it. It's like 2 a.m." <laughs> like, I'm like, "Are you sure?" He's like, "Ah." <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, man. Everyone's been on lockdown. Like, it, this is the thing that I've missed the most. Uh, you know, just talking film with people, going to the pub yeah. and just dissecting film and just shooting shit. Hey, well, you're always welcome here, my friend. And we could talk movies for, for hours. You're always welcome on the podcast. Thank you. All right. So let's get into uh, a little bit here. So that's pretty awesome, man. You have been acting for a while. This is yeah, pretty cool, time. man. All these different projects. It's really, really awesome. And uh, uh, besides the bargain bin <laughs> and yes. movies in general, was there any other inspirations that um, made you want to become an actor? Um, my dad introduced me to a lot of films really early on uh, and primarily films that I wasn't actually old enough to watch. So um, that's yeah. kind of what really uh, pushed me into it. It was uh, well, not pushed me, but like kind of really edged me towards it. I mean, when I was a kid, I always wanted to you'd watch a film and I was like, you know, I want to be a cop. My mom was like, oh, you want to be a policeman? I was like, no, no, a cop in New York, you know? like, uh, So I'd always pick these jobs where it's kind of like, I want to do whatever just happened in that film. Right. And uh, I figured I don't have enough life in me to do all those jobs, so be an actor and do everything. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I got you. I got you. That's pretty cool, though, man. Oh, and by the way, I am jealous that you were allowed to watch movies that you weren't old enough to watch. Because <laughs> I, I suffered. Chat knows this already. I suffered, man. Everything was a no-no in my house. <laughs> you know, until I got older, you know, I was like, oh, man. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, dude, I watched, um, I mean, this one here, you know, I had to wear this because. Yes. You know, it's, we're talking action. Yeah. And I, I remember watching this with my dad. And every time, obviously, I've seen it a hundred times now, the sex scenes would come up. He would uh, just put the hands over the eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when he was ripping throats out, fine. Yeah. I can watch that. That's not a problem. You got, you got to put the hands over the eyes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you covering your eyes, son? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you got to love Double Deuce. You got you got a little roadhouse, man. You got a little roadhouse. Wait you know, for, for years they've always been talking about remaking Roadhouse. And I was just like, no, just just don't. They did a sequel. I, I heard it was garbage. I didn't see it. Was it garbage? Yeah, it, it wasn't good. I mean, if it's not Patrick Swayze, if it's not Sam Elliott, I mean, you know, it's not the Jeff Healy band. What do you have here? Uh right. but I mean, Sam Elliott is like the coolest motherfucker you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> yeah. it's super cool. I mean, I didn't get to have Sam Elliott hair, but I always wanted to have Sam Elliott Wade Garrett hair. I mean, right? he's so Verge. cool. Verge. I couldn't Verge. get them on it, you know, Patrick Swayze. I just couldn't grow this haircut. Uh, <laughs> so I had to direct. Hey, that style you're rocking though right now, <laughs> that's what's that's actually in now. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I tell myself all the time it's through choice. Uh, it's definitely through choice. Breaking bad, son. <laughs> you know, it's, hey, that's the that's the style right now. Uh, but yeah, you gotta love Roadhouse, man. That's like one of the best ever. It's ever. so cool. But back to back to Streets uh, on Fire. There, Streets on Fire of Fire. I can't see. Oh, fire, yeah. Of Fire, yeah. yeah. It's funny because I'm not really a fan of musicals. Mm. You know, I'm I'm okay. I'm okay with them, right? And I didn't know. I came across Streets of Fire on TV one day. Just came on, and I, I you know, it, it looked kind of badass, right? You got Marco Pare with a shotgun. You got. Yeah. William William Defoe looking like a crazy fucking uh, vampire biker, yeah. <laughs> right? And I was just like, oh, I gotta watch this. And then all of a sudden, there was singing in the beginning. I was like, oh, oh, we're singing. And then, it, and then you know, we have songs throughout the movie. And I was like, oh wow. Like at first, I didn't know I was gonna like it, but then, but then by the end of the movie, I was just like, all right, I gotta buy it. I instantly yeah. went and bought it on Blu-ray. It's so uh, good. Yeah, I was like, that's, you know, I got to represent, you know, even though it's a musical, a good yeah. movie is a good movie. I mean, right? it's, I think when it came out, I mean, it completely got hammered uh, press-wise and like money-wise, but it's had a really long life. Like, it's huge in Japan. Right. Um, and, and there's a few countries where it's absolutely massive, but they kind of think they were not too happy with Michael Perry, and I really like him, and I think he's cool as shit. He's perfect in that he's movie. Perfect. What are you talking about? He's beyond cool. And he was like 21 in that. Really? 21. I think Diane Lane was like 17. Yeah. She they're, they're, kids. they're all little kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, an, it's an epic film. And I mean, you know, people talk about, you, you know, great female characters. And McCoy um, is amazing. The, the kind of like partner that he has, the driver sort of thing. Um, yeah. He kind of like kicks Bill Paxton's ass uh, yeah. at the beginning. It's yeah. a really badass film. For yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's weird because it's not like um, it's a different type of musical where the songs are part of the the, the performances, like on stage. Yeah, but they're like the musicians are performing stuff in the background. Like it's not like you know Michael Parry is washing dishes and he starts singing. <laughs> I'm all out of soap. You know, I'm all out of soap. I'm all out of soap. You know, it's not like that. That I probably would have turned the movie off. But uh, yeah, man, I'm, I, that's that's really cool. Because once I enjoyed watching Streets of Fire, uh, my wife liked it too. She really liked mm -hmm. it too. Um, I was just like, man, why is nobody talking about this movie? Yeah, <laughs> it's really weird because it's such a weird film. I mean, it was. It, a huge influence on on knuckle dust and um, we use a lot of music in in knuckle dust and then um, we actually had a musical number in it uh but i had to cut it uh for time um oh. because uh just in the script stage we didn't get to shoot it just because it was a kind of like it was cool but it wasn't moving anything along 
Uh, and I was kind of like, it's going to take a few days to shoot. But right. yeah, a huge influence musically on the film. We tried to shoot all the action sequences, the fights with like a, a musical, with a different musical genre each time. Yeah, um, not, yeah, you were talking about Knuckle Dust, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. There were different tones of, there were different genres of music throughout the, mm. the film. And uh, here you go, we got William Defoe is awesome there. There you go, chats, chime it in there. Yeah, Raven Shaddock is a, one of the coolest bad guy names of all time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's good to know that we're not alone, that there are fans for the movie out there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Walter Hill, man, the fucking Warriors. You know, Red yeah. Heat, the, the 48 hours. 48 hours. hours. Like, yeah. that well, guy. I, did he did amazing stuff. I mean, we just watched, because um, I'm working on a, um, a samurai film at the moment. Oh, and, uh, shit. Yeah. I'm already so, excited. I know. And <laughs> I can't so say too much because we're just at, like, script stage. But um so I bought all the um, Rashomon and um, Yajimbo and, you know, uh, Seven Samurai and stuff to rewatch everything and go for it all. Yeah. We started watching uh, Yajimbo last night. It's such a good film. It's so funny, man. It's such a bad yeah. Yeah. He is so fucking cool. And you yeah. realize how um, Streets of Fire is so much based on that film. Yeah. Um, and then I didn't realize, obviously, Walter Hill then went and made Last Man Standing with Bruce Willis, which is just Yajimbo. Yeah, yeah. Basically the film. And um, Fistful of Dollars with Clint Eastwood. Yeah. 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 It's but, so uh, good. Yeah, it's a classic, man. Yeah. It's I a mean, classic. It's, it's beautifully shot, and it's so simple. Yeah. You know, yeah. so simple. Have you, have you seen the sequel, Sanjuro? No. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's uh, I like the uh, you, it's, Sanjuro is really good too, and it's funnier. It's yeah. actually funnier than Yojimbo. Still Toshiro and Fune playing Sanjuro, uh, but um, yeah, that's the sequel to the film. But the duel at the end of Sanjuro is like <laughs> it's insane. I don't want to ruin it for you, but it's literally one second, one movement, <clears throat> and then yeah. chaos. You're gonna be like, holy shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll you, you'll you'll like it, man. Sanjuro was really good. Yeah, it's Kira Kurosawa. I, yeah. I haven't seen a bad Akira Kurosawa movie. Yeah, he's no amateur. Uh, yeah. You know, he he seems to know what he's doing. Yeah, yeah he, <laughs> he's a legend. He's a legend. But one thing, one thing, uh, just to, just because you brought up uh, Yojimbo, one thing annoyed me about not the movie. The movie's great, but I, I'll never forget this. And then I realized just how people are just not into certain things and it's unfortunate, but then, you know, to each his own, right? To each his own. If they don't like it, they don't like it. But I remember sitting down watching it with my buddy Wayne, because we were big uh, Toshiro Minfune fans and we were watching it. And some of my other buddies that came in late, they came in later and came behind me and they're watching the the, the final climax where the badass shot of Yojimbo walking with the wind blowing the dust and he's walking in the middle of the, of the yard uh, with the with the with the villains coming the other way in slow motion, right before he wrecks shop and destroys all of them, right? It's like it's iconic. It's iconic scene, right? That that whole time where they're walking slow mo, you know, slowly towards each other, hmm. the idiots in the back were going, "Oh, we're well, gonna fight already, jeez! Oh God, you hurry up and fight already!" <laughs> I'm just like. I was like, okay, you guys need to leave. <laughs> you guys have no idea what you're talking about. Go leave. Yeah, go yeah, go ahead. Go watch your Fast and Furious. Go watch, watch your Fast and Furious. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just like, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a but, difficult yeah. man. Some people want the tension and the build up, and some people just want the fight. Um, I like both. Some people don't want the fight to be too long. Some people want the fight to be quick. Like I like both. I like right? everything. Yeah. I'm yeah. And it, I'm, I'm sure me and you are pro probably similar with, we both have like an open mind and we like all different genres and whatnot, right? Hmm. Well, speaking of genres, what's some of your favorite uh, genres of film? Besides action. I'm a big uh, horror fan. Yes. Um, like I'm a massive John Carpenter fan. Yes. Uh, so there's, there, there's no John Carpenter posters because um we put them all in the downstairs bathroom so the whole okay. bathroom is john carpenter Love uh, it. so every time i go sit in the toilet it's uh feels pretty sweet uh, nice, nice. Like do you have a favorite uh carpenter film or uh, they kind of they kind of change all the time change all the time i mean at the right? moment they live is like yes we rewatched it again recently and it's just there's no fault to it at all 
No. Like, and again, like a, a bit like Michael Pere, I think Roddy Piper just didn't get the career that he should have got. He he really should have. He's like, so he good. Wanted, he's one of the rare wrestler turn actors that can actually act. Can act. When you get, he can actually act because he has his own charisma. I mean, come on. I've come here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Was an ad lib. Yeah. He came up with that on the spot. So I really wish he would have did more work with Carpenter. At least starred in his movies would have been fun. Yeah. He didn't have to be the star. He could have been a co-star, but it would have been fun to see him more in that. But Piper was great. Piper's great. I mean, that's the thing as well. You kind of, just as a, a supporting character in other films, I, I don't understand how other directors didn't watch that and go, let's get him in. Like, yeah. Epic. I mean, even when he was in um, Always Sunny, um, you know, before yes. he was He's amazingly funny. Like he's a really cool guy. Was it? Was he channeling Mickey Rourke's wrestler? <laughs> I think he was a little bit. I think, so, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what he was doing. Oh man! But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we love that they live. That's one of our favorites. Uh, Carpenter movies, man. I mean, it has one of the best fight scenes in movie history. Yeah. The, I the mean, key it's, it's, like in the yeah. in the, um, the what do you call it uh, alleyway? Yeah, uh, him, it's epic. Him and, yeah, him and Keith David. Yeah, put the glasses on. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 too it's too iconic. All right, yeah. Fire, you, see, see, man, me and you can talk movies all day. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I mean, another one I really like, which I know it doesn't get as much love. Well, it's two actually. Jesus, you go for all of them, but I really like vampires. It's good. I like it. It's, it's not fun. the best. It's, it's fun. But it's fun. You yeah. Know, it's a vampire, a team of vampire hunters. It's cool. Uh, uh, what do you think it would have been more successful if Kurt Russell was the lead? Because originally Kurt Russell was supposed to be the lead. He couldn't yeah. do it because of scheduling conflicts. And so they got James Woods, who still did a good job. Yeah. Um, I, think, I, I mean, I think if you had Kurt Russell, it becomes a Kurt Russell and John Carpenter film, and then suddenly it elevates everything, doesn't it? Because everyone's waiting for that. But right, right. I still think, yeah, I thought James Woods' Jack Crow was cool as fuck. Yeah. Uh, I think he's really good. Um, yeah. I mean, you can say that on any Carpenter film, like if Kurt Russell was in it. Right, you know, right. If Kurt Russell <laughs> was Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, would, would Halloween have been good? Uh, I think so. Yeah. We got some We got some vampire love here in the chat. Look at this. Look at that. Look yeah. That. Vampires is way better than Twilight. <laughs> <Yeah>. Twilight. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. It's and, uh, than uh, Twilight, definitely. Back to uh, they live. Uh, chat saying uh, it was a, it was ahead of its time. It, it yeah. definitely was. It seems like there's more fans of it now uh, than when it came out. And well, maybe yeah. that maybe that could have been what kept Piper from becoming more of a mainstream superstar. Maybe the movie didn't do that well when it came out. Well, I think it's, I mean, there's so many, a lot of the films I really love are like that. You know, you look like Streets of Fire, you know, I'm watching it 30 years on, and I think it's what's well, greatest film of all time. And it did not get the love. Roddy yeah. Piper didn't get the love at the time. I mean, the thing got absolutely hammered when it yeah, came out, destroyed. That's, it's yeah. insane. Insane. Because that, that is, is again, that's not that me fighting with Streets of Fire. Because, I mean, the thing is a perfect film. There's not one yeah. moment that's not good. And uh, uh, Empire Strikes Back, that's another one, destroyed. Yeah. Critics destroyed. didn't like it. You know, oh, it, was too, it was too depressing. I was like, oh my God. It's yeah. the second part of the trilogy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the second act. This is before it picks up again. Come yeah. on. Scarface got destroyed. There's so yeah. many movies. There's so, There's so many bad. movies. And I have a lot of them in my Blu ray collection. Uh, right. Where, you know, they just didn't hit at the time. And then 20, 30 years later, they're still stuck around. And the films that won Oscars that year. Yeah. No yeah. one remembers them. But what makes me enjoy John Carpenter's Vampires even more now, when I watch it now, is because Chad had to point out to me that the main vampire was played by the, uh, the actor who played Terry Silver in yeah. Karate Kid Part 3. <laughs> uh, uh, it, 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 Thomas, no, Nicholas, Thomas Ian Nicholas? Yes, yes. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh, well, I love the movie even more now. <laughs> he, was, he was literally the best part of Karate Kid Part 3. Oh man, Terry Silver's a badass. I'm really hoping he comes up in the next season of Cobra Kai. Right? Cobra right? Kai is unbelievably good. Like, yeah, it, it's it's a lot better than I mean, it's got its flaws, but it's a lot better than it should have been. Well, I mean, when people you get so many reboots and remakes and reshuffles and all that kind of yeah. shit. This is one of the first things I've seen where it it doesn't just homage the show, the film. 
it doesn't just throw in a few cameos. It actually moves the story on, has a lot of respect right. for it, and you kind of and you understand the world. And it's like, I mean, I think William Zabka is unbelievable, right? My and God, it's, it's it's funny because after the, sh the success of the Cobra Kai show, people were like. Where the fuck has William Zabka been all these years? Yeah. <laughs> That's what everyone's everyone says that. They're like, where's this guy been? Yeah. He, he's so good. I mean, I've never seen a guy say quiet and make yeah. me laugh so much. Quiet! Quiet! Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> great. Uh we got some uh big trouble little China fans here. That's right. That's my favorite. Yeah. That's my yeah. favorite. I, I'm I'm a, I am i can not help it, man. I'm I I think I bought Big Trouble Little China like 30 times. In my life, it yeah. said VHS, DVD, special edition DVD, Blu ray, fork. It's, it's ridiculous. See, again, yeah, big trouble in Little China. I mean, again, I can't fault it. It's really funny. It's full of that. Again, that didn't do well. Right? It came out. It did. People didn't understand it. I mean, yeah. the thing is, you, bl you blend genres with stuff, and people say, oh, you're blending too many genres, or you know, it's too much of other people's stuff or something like that, or yeah. it's too much this, too much that. Yeah. And I think over time you rewatch stuff. And I think Big Trouble in Little China is an exceptionally good film. I mean, it mixes yeah. Asian cinema and Western cinema really, really well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it has that kind of, you know, he's playing that kind of John Wayne douchey kind of guy who's yeah. really still lovable. Um, <laughs> and that really kind of American kind of trope. It, it's fantastic. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's got the fantasy, it's got the horror, the martial arts. And it's and it's one of those things where one of the one of the thing one of the things people don't get about the movie is that one of the best parts of the the, the best parts of the movie are the is basically the fact that he's really the sidekick. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's done, isn't it? He's like yeah. um, he's just a real cool kind of guy. I mean, yeah, he doesn't fight anyone. He keeps jumping in at the last minute. Yeah. Uh, yeah he's just kind of there. Yeah. Even though he's like, the, we love Jack Burton, and he he could be looked at as as the badass hero, but really his his sidekick really is the hero is is really the badass. Yeah, which is one of the funnier parts about the movie, which is great, you know. But again, it, you know, people watch. I don't know. I imagine they watched it the first time, and they were kind of like, this doesn't fit what's supposed to fit. Like Kurt Russell is supposed to be the the guy, and this guy's the yeah. side. I don't understand what's happening, and then right. all this kind of stuff just I think gets misconstrued when it first comes out, and it gets I think stuff as well obviously gets critiqued when it first comes out. And it gets taken yeah. apart a bit yeah. clinically. It's not enjoyed for what it is, so you can actually uh, understand it completely. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and speaking of another movie that was that was ahead of its time was Big Trouble. Yeah, because there was even parts in the movie with the script where Jack Burton was like breaking the fourth wall a little bit. <laughs> he yeah. was like, "We got people flying in, flying around on wires. <laughs> Come on." <laughs> <laughs> in the 80s, man, they just whoop, they just went right over their head. They just didn't get it. But the important thing is, we got it. We that's got right. it. And that's, that's all that matters. matters. That's all that matters. Movie Dojo Army has got it. That's right. All right. So uh, we went over some of your acting credentials, and you got a lot of cool stuff that you've been in here. And it's really awesome that you're living your dream, my friend. Thanks, uh, but what motivated you? To uh, kind of let's let's dip my toe here in the director's chair now. What what was some of your motivations for that? What from moving to acting to filmmaking? Yes. Um, it's difficult. Uh, I mean, the whole industry is very difficult. You know, to kind of uh, to, to move up, move ahead. Um, basically, I was doing nice parts on TV. It was, it was you know, <laughs> every once in a while, bits of film and stuff. But it's very difficult to unless you have the right agent and so on and so forth to break through and and start to get bigger larger roles right um and that just wasn't happening uh for me for whatever reasons um right. so i decided to take just more control um yeah. and uh i kind of had to sit down and go why did i start this in the first place um and it was to create stuff not just be told go you know do the acting thing just yeah create whole things and i had lots of ideas so it's kind of like Let's go for that. So originally, Knock With Us was I wrote it for myself to play the lead. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So that was how it originally started out. Yeah. So it's meant to be a vehicle for me. And we were going to get um, a, a director uh, on board. And I spoke to a few directors. We actually spoke to um, Tony K for a while, American History X, okay. uh, who's who super interested in doing the film. That didn't work out for various reasons. Um, 
and so in the end i kind of just decided to take complete control nice. uh, and direct it myself nice well that's awesome man so it kind of sounds like it was just a matter of time for you to make that next step you know it just evolve you know yeah. into filmmaker as a filmmaker so that's yeah. awesome that's awesome and so uh i came across this i didn't watch it i didn't watch it yet but i came across all right your your short that you made here uh bucking hell yeah all right and this came out in uh 2016 this is your first one of your first shorts yep and a critically acclaimed short as well yes it didn't do too badly let me remove the banner here so that chat could see but yeah adam the movie god and dread central uh, amongst others, uh, gave it an eight out of ten, which is pretty awesome, man. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So uh, pretty tell us a little bit about uh, Bucking Hell, this short here. Um, it was basically I, I wanted to shoot something that was completely contained. Um, so it's kind of uh, these. There's been a big storm, and everyone else has gone over the uh, the sides, um, and the storm's still raging. And these three guys are down in the bowels of this ship, um, but there's only one life jacket, so they're playing a game of uh, Buckaroo. Okay. Um, to see who loses last to get this last life jacket. And basically, um, one of the guys is dead already at the table. Uh, and so they start trying to take each other out as the lights keep flickering on and off. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. It's a nice, nice little it, thriller. Uh, uh, yeah. It's, it's a little bit of, a little bit of dark comedy in there as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. But yeah, it looked, it looked hilarious. Once I kind of read the plot synopsis, <laughs> I was like, oh man, this sounds like fun. But yeah, critically acclaimed. A lot of people really liked it. So I'll, send already... you, I'll send you, a, send you a, a link. Oh yeah. That'd be great. Oh, Thank you. I would love to watch it. And, uh, and then now we segue from that to, you know, your first feature film here. Mm -hmm. That's right. Hi, low Joe. Now I kind of read the plot synopsis a little bit. It's more of a, uh, mental health is the main issue. Yeah. The main topic, is, not an issue, but topic, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, you want to talk a little bit about this? This was yeah. actually highly rated as well. I was looking at the ratings on here. Yeah, yeah it's not too bad, actually. Uh, it, it, it was um, so basically, I was trying to get Knuckledust moving with me as a director. <laughs> and Knuckledust is obviously a, an insanely large film. Yeah. And uh, obviously, no one would let me direct it. <laughs> like, if anyone out there wants to direct, it's super hard to get people to part with their money. Uh, to let you uh, play out your little fantasies. And, uh, right. and so I decided to make something that was a bit more personal, much smaller, more contained, just to show I can direct, write and direct a film. Right. Um, and so then that's what I came up with, Hilo Joe. Um, right. uh, and then that's how I, from that is how I got the producer for Knuckle Dust. Okay, cool. Awesome, awesome. But yeah, that looked really interesting too. Just the whole topic that's based off of very serious... Um, and one of the actors that's in Hilo Joe is is in Knuckle Dust as well. Yes, Matt, yeah. Matt Sathers, who plays the lead in Hilo, is uh, Hot Lips. In, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm lo I love all the names. We're gonna, we're almost, we're almost. I'm, I'm, you see, you see what I'm doing here, right? I'm slowly <laughs> get to it, right? So, <laughs> plus, I want Chad to also know about your other work, right? Oh, of course, man. Of course, I want to yeah. let them know. So, George in the house. Thanks for the donation, my friend. Thank you for supporting the channel. Really appreciate it. All right. Oh, he says he's been a big fan of me since the Batman trailer. Well, thank you. I appreciate you, George. Always appreciate the support. So, uh, but yeah, I'll have to check out Hilo Joe as, as well. I would love to watch that also. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go ahead and get to it here. Um, how long did it take to uh, film Knuckle Dust? We did it in five weeks. No, what? Thirty. 30 days just over 30 days i think or under 30 days um yeah five weeks that five weeks yeah <laughs> <That's insane. laughs> holy that, that crap was that was doing every day on set <laughs> wow that that's that's really impressive wow that's wow five five days i mean five days five <laughs> weeks yeah man holy we were, crap it was insane we were sending stuff over to the editors and they were sending yeah. the editing for us every day and they were kind of like, how many days worth of stuff is this? And they were like, that's one. It's one day. And they were like, well, that's three locations and a fight scene. And so on. And they were like, yep, yep, that's what they're shooting every day. <laughs> you must have had a pretty cool team, man. That's awesome to get really it done cool like team. that. I would, I would never have thought you did that whole movie in five weeks. That's mm -hmm. that's pretty impressive. 
All right, chat, we're getting ready to talk about knuckle dust. All right, we're getting ready to talk about it. Uh, it came out in 2020. Was that the actual release date, or did it come out in the UK a little earlier? Uh, it came out in the US and the UK within a week of each other in December. Okay, okay, cool. All right, so what I'm going to do, uh, first of all, first off, chat, I recommend Knuckle Dust. All right, I recommend you guys check it out. If you are fans, right, of exciting, hilarious, got some dark comedy, over the top, action, this over the top everything. This this you crank it to eleven. Crank it to eleven. <laughs> you go past eleven, right? Different music genres, fight scenes, shooting, comedy, a little bit of twists here and there, which I will not spoil. Uh, but yeah, if you're into that, highly recommend checking out uh, Knuckle Dust. But if you're one of those that watched Yojimbo and was like, "Man, they're taking too long to fight," man, <laughs> right? I don't know. <laughs> you may not like Knuckle Dust. <laughs> if you're fans of Disney's Frozen and all you want to do is watch Frozen 24 7 every day. And this is the film for you. <laughs> <laughs> the whole film is based on Frozen. Just, that's yeah, it. You know. that, that, that's it. There, spoiled. Spoilers. Fuck it. <laughs> it's all about Frozen. <laughs> all right. I'm going to read the plot synopsis really quick for chat off of IMDb. That's the, that way they know what we're talking about here, but I will stay away from spoilers here. No worries. Knuckle dust. So, when a special police task force kick open the doors of elite underground fight den club Knuckle Dust, they find seven levels of hell filled with the dead bodies of countless fighters, assassins, and goons. Only one man beaten to a pulp, barely breathing, is still alive. Hard eight. With a shady government official en route to take him away, Chief Inspector Catherine Keaton and her team have 90 minutes to interrogate Hard Eight to find out if, excuse me, I, I'm fired. I'm already fired from my voice acting job. <laughs> <laughs> the lone survivor, if he is a lone survivor or a multiple murderer with lies flying from everyone's mouths and corruption becoming apparent, Keaton starts to wonder. Who is the real criminal? All right. Thank you. Thank you. And I fucked well, it up. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked it up, man. This was my debut. <laughs> Voice actor fucked it all up, but no, it's yeah, all one good. job, dude. <laughs> Jesus. There we go. Take my money, Mr. Kermack. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Omniblast, what's going on? Thanks for popping in. That she is awesome. She's she's she is a badass herself. All right. Norza says, haven't seen this movie, but James here seems like a cool guy. And we'll make sure to give it a watch. There you go. There you go, chat. Come on. After seeing the trailer and before the stream, it looks fun and tongue in cheek. And yes, there it is. Tongue in cheek. Uh, uh, some hilarious hilarious moments, some goofy moments, some dark comedy moments. And I love I love all that shit. You know, we're good to go. Oh, okay. Somebody liked my voiceover. All right. I appreciate <laughs> it. That's the, you know, you know what that is? That's the pity clap, right? <laughs> oh, God. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. All right. So, Knuckle Dust, man. I know a while back I did the trailer reaction. That's how uh, you, your team contacted me. And uh, it, it was just, I just saw it. I was like, oh, let me, ch let me check it out. It looked like it might be a cool action trailer to react to and i was just like this looks like a blast <laughs> and it was you know and i and i rented it that's right i paid my money Thank that's you. right i, I did that. not illegally stream <laughs> right um i, I mean what's on my rented it i ended up buying it off of amazon prime now i know it has a dvd release mm -hmm. is there a blu-ray coming or as of right now it's just dvd i think it's just dvd at the moment uh that's fine yeah, in the US, I think uh, I think Europe and potentially Japan has a Blu-ray coming out. Right, right, right. Uh, Kyle has a good question here. He goes, "When the creator is being interviewed, can you show more of their content without getting hit for copyright?" No. <laughs> 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 so that that answers your your question, Kyle. Um, 
other other than put, me acting, a, acting out scenes, I think that's yeah. that's yeah. <laughs> I put a, I put a few snippets from the trailer in the intro to the podcast. I'll do that, uh, but I won't get too too, too crazy because then there'll be a copyright. <laughs> You know, it's it's funny because uh, when we do our trailer reactions, I got I got a couple of messages last night because our Mortal Kombat trailer reaction yeah. is doing well. Uh, it's over forty thousand views now. Not and um, have you seen the trailer? Yes. Oh man, it looks good, right? Yeah, I was surprised. Good. I was surprised. I really was. And they, I got a, several messages last night, and they were like, "Why is the why is it backwards? Like, why is the video that you know that we put between us that we're, we're reacting yeah. to?" It's in reverse. It's flipped. Yeah. And they're like, that screws it up for me. I don't understand. Like, why you guys do that all the time? <laughs> it's like, it's got this copyright. <laughs> copyright. Okay? And we still get hit with copyright claims. Even when we do that, we still yeah. get hit with it once in a while. And then I have to dispute it because we follow the rules on here yes. on YouTube. We, we, we're within our power to follow the rules correctly under the fair use copyright law. So we follow the rules. Uh, but I know. I just had to let everybody know in case they were wondering why the videos flipped all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Ballin, Ballin in the, oh, excuse me. Ballin's in the house. Cool. Sondra Child, thanks for the donation. He says, I will definitely check out the tombs, Mr. Kermack. All right. As you guys know, I'm quite the horror fan. Take care and try to stay scared. We will. All right. Uh, we'll talk about the tombs once. You, that's the, one of your next projects, right? Or it's uh, no, the, tombs, the tombs I acted in. Uh, and it was about, oh man, it must be four years ago, four or five years ago. And I think it came out maybe last year. Um, but it's like a very kind of grungy, horror -y kind of film set in the London tombs, the, the kind of attraction. Nice. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, it sated one of my uh, things of being killed in a horror film. So it doesn't spoil the plot for you at all. <laughs> you, you know I'm not going to be uh, living till the end. Do you have a meaty role, sir? Or is it kind of a quick in, role? In that, no, no, it's, just, it's a small supporting role. So you know I'm going to get uh, cut up at some point, so it's fine. Uh, but yeah, that was just kind of like I always wanted to die in a horror film. Yeah. So, yeah, sweet. Yeah, I say that all the time. Every time I have guests, hey, have you got a got a scene for me to run in there and I get killed? Yeah. Or <laughs> <laughs> have the slasher kill me or a creature or I get beat up in a fight, you know? Uh, I'm all there. It's, it sounds like a blast. All right, Knuckle Dust. So here we go. We got the uh, cast here. L pretty good cast you got going here, man. Yeah, man. Let's see here. Let me get back to IMDb here. One second. So we have, you have Amy Bailey. I remember her from Vikings. You got mm -hmm. Phil Davis from Alien 3. You got uh, Oliver Richters, who plays yeah, Rob Bowen, who, who might be the most frightening man uh, that exists. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show chat a photo of him later. Well, um, he's, uh, he's, doing like a, he's got loads of cool stuff coming out. He's, doing, uh, he's done The Kingsman, the new one. He's done Black Widow. Oh, uh, shit. So he's got like, well, I'd say everything he does is big because he's nice. huge. But uh, right. he's got lots of big stuff coming out. Nice. Well, awesome. That's good for him, man. I'm going to have yeah. to keep an eye. Well, it won't be hard to miss him in future because <laughs> he's huge. Uh, Kate Dickey. Yep. She's from uh, you know, Game of Thrones and The Witch. She was really good in The Witch. Yes. She's right. amazing. And uh, just a lot of people here, man. A lot of, a lot of really good cast. But Mo Dunford. Uh, that guy, he's really good, man. He's the uh, yeah. actor who plays Hard Eight, and he um, uh, was really good in Vikings. That was my introduction to him. Yeah, I just did. finished that show. Very good show. Mm. I, I enjoyed it, but he was really good in Vikings. That was my introduction to him. Well, and he, Jay, oh, go ahead. He he was uh, he's friends with Amy, obviously, because they worked together on Vikings. Yeah. Um, so she's actually who introduced me to Mo. Uh, oh, nice. Well, um, and then we just kind of discussed. Um, Films, which is how we got on. So we discussed uh, early Stallone, 80s Stallone, Tango and Cash. Hell uh, yeah. And uh, any Harrison Ford. He reminds yeah. me a lot of Harrison Ford. Um, and then we were just yeah. kind of like, cool, let's do it. This sounds great. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, Jamie Winstone, mm -hmm. she was in Tomb Raider. And she uh, she was also in a show, uh, a series called Dead, uh, Dead yes. Set. Chat, Dead Set. 
If you have not seen Dead Set, it's great. It's a, it's a, what is it like four episodes? It's four it's episodes. Zombie. It's like um, a Big Brother zombie kind of reality TV. Yeah, it's a reality um, TV type show. It's like maybe four or five episodes, mini series, but it's all zombie. Zombie apocalypse has happened, and it's hilarious. And there's some good gore and kills in there. The Dead Set. I never even heard of it, and then I came out. I came across it uh, several years back, and I was like, dude, this is great. Yeah, the Dead Set chat. Highly recommend uh, that. Uh, let's see here, but yeah, a lot of a lot of cast here. Yes, yeah, a big cast. Uh, the actor who plays TikTok was a Sebastian Falcon. Fukan. Fukan. Okay, yeah, I'm, yeah. Horrible, I'm horrible with names. Uh, that guy, that guy was in Casino Royale and the tournament. Yes. So he's got some yeah. good stuff here. Well, he's the and, guy uh, in the Casino Royale who does the the opening on the crane and stuff. Right. Like, he's he's like the originator of parkour. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Yeah, once I saw his photo, I recognized him. I was like, oh, shit, he's the guy from the beginning of the movie. Yeah, he's still, um, still Daniel Craig's best Bond. What do you think? Easily. Yeah. yeah. I like I like Skyfall, though. That might be my second. Yeah, I quite liked it. I, there's some nice moments in it, but I remember walking out and feeling like like I, it was quite – I'd forgotten it once I'd left. Yeah. Whereas right, I found right. Tina Royale stayed with me for a very long time. I mean, the That's open, cool. the black and white, and – yeah, you know, we hadn't seen a Bond like that for, I mean, not since really trying Timothy Dalton when they were quite brutal. Yeah, yeah. License to Kill, man. That was like the probably the most violent Bond up to that point. I really liked Tim Dalton in Bond. Really? So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't like him. him. When I was growing up, I didn't like him because he always, I always saw him as a villain. Yeah. But then when I got older and watched it, I was like, dude, Timothy Dalton was great. Um, like, we, watched, um, we watched the, the Rocketeer. Uh, the yes. Other He's cool as shit in that. Yes. That, that's another great adventure film. That's mm -hmm. another, like, why are more people talking about the Rocketeer, damn it? Yeah. <laughs> it's so <laughs> much fun. It's so much fun. All right. Let me go back here. All right. Knuckle Dust. Any issues or stories while filming the movie? Any crazy shit happen? Jesus Christ. I mean, we shot it in five weeks, so every I day was crazy shit happening. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was constantly crazy shit. Right. Um, oh God, I don't know. I mean, there was a time where we kind of, uh, I can't remember if we lost the location, and then we had to find a location for the next day. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we, everyone was just waiting to know where they were turning up to shoot. Right. Uh, and we were basically supposed to shoot in a church and we didn't have the church. So we shot in this place and we went there and I was kind of like, so at the opening of the film where Serena walks through and there's all these kind of reeds and stuff like that coming down and it's, yeah, it's yeah, weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was all just kind of there and we had to create a church within there and, wow. you know, and that kind of stuff. So that was, that was like a 12 hour, okay, we need to turn this place into a church. So yeah. Yeah. let's go, let's go for it. So that was quite stressful. Um, but fun because in the film it looks a bit mad and, and yeah and crazy yeah um, I it mean does every, look good. every fight sequence we shot in a day or less wow so the the stunt team were fantastic um, nice. and the fight choreographer fight director was fantastic so everyone had to work really hard I mean the the dildo corridor fight sequence that was uh, a <laughs> yeah, half good. a day. I was gonna get to that <laughs> a little bit later, but I know Chat's like, "What the hell are you talking about?" <laughs> we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna get to it right now. So the the already off the bat, uh, the opening, uh, very a lot of exciting, uh, fun opening credits in the beginning. I yeah. like, I love the neon look. I love how everything's overly stylized for, but but it but done well, hmm. you know. But I I was just like, "Oh, this looks like it's gonna be a fun movie with the with the neon and all that." Yeah. Uh, any any comic book. Motivations, movie uh, motivations. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, we always imagined that we would do, which is something we're working on at the moment, to do comic books on all of the uh, side characters. So, like a Knuckle Dust origin sort of thing. Yes, we're working yeah. on that at the moment. So, we okay. wanted to definitely give that graphic novel comic book vibe at the beginning, so we could go a bit further with the fights and make yeah. them more outlandish. Um, and there was a guy called uh, an artist called Paulie Bates, whom Bates, his name is, who uh, drew all of that. For me, nice. so you want this, want this, and he drew everything himself. Nice, but yeah, I enjoyed that. But I, I definitely got that vibe as well. 
Um, not just the Western vibe, the samurai vibe, the gunplay yeah. vibe, <laughs> but, you know, the cop thriller vibe, but I definitely got the, the graphic novel vibe yeah. uh, as well, right at the beginning. But I remember I'm watching the credits. I love that opening theme song. That theme song is great. That's cool, That's right? That's badass, dude. Yeah. But um, the, uh, when, when, the, when the camera was, pan, you know, you know when, was, when the credits were going by, I was like, wait a minute. Did I just see a guy with dildo nunchucks? Wait a minute. Wait, did I see things? <laughs> was I seeing things, right? Uh, and it comes to come to find out later in the movie, I did not see things. Uh, because we got a lot of crazy characters here uh in the what was it, the, the seven levels of hell or eight levels? Seven, seven. Seven, right? Right, and I was like, "What in the world did I just see that?" So I was busting up laughing already, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, our boy here, these—it's funny you're talking about the whole like you want to make uh, comic book backgrounds on the characters, right? Because mm -hmm. as soon as we're introduced to these guys, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love all the neon uh, uh, names for you know the style. I love mm -hmm. all of that for everyone in the whole movie. But happy, we got happy and hot lips here. <laughs> All right, talking about key was <laughs> key guitar, keytars, keytars, yeah. Fun. And you, you gotta love hitmen that take selfies. Yes, <laughs> because yeah. it's hilarious. It's yeah, hilarious. It's like a nice silence a selfie. Yeah, yeah. And so I, <laughs> silence a selfie. So yeah, like when these guys are introduced, and then when you see what happens to them later in the movie, I was just like, oh man, we we really could have used. Uh, uh, some shorts of these guys, like you know, on the side, or maybe a DVD extra, or yes. some shorts with these characters or whatnot, or their own series because it was they were cracking me up, man. I was dying. Yeah. Uh, but um, let's see here. So again, how big was Tombstone? Tombstone was six foot eight. Okay. Yeah. This This is my homie right here. Man. This guy, this guy might be my favorite character in the movie. <laughs> he, he's, he's amazing. He's an amazing actor. Was was he the uh, Prometheus character in Victor Frankenstein? Yes, he was. Yeah, he was. He was uh, Frankenstein. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And I, th I think he was also in a fantasy flick called Tale of Tales. Yes, uh, with uh, Eva Green. With Eva Green. Uh, I think Selma Hayek's in there. Selma Hayek and John C. Riley. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Which yeah, is a it's a kind of a mature rated fantasy flick. It's not it's not <laughs> for people who love Frozen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but again, if you love Frozen, then watch Knuckle Dust, right? It, it, most definitely. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, this, on, the, this on the DVD part, cover, maybe add yeah, them. right. This is this is uh, my guy here. I think this might be my favorite character in the movie. But Tombstone's fucking people up, punching people. They're flying across the room. <laughs> I mean, how did you pull that off? Was that a cable that pulled that guy? Or? Yeah, that was a cable that was, um, they brought in a big wire uh, and then okay. just yanked. Nice, uh, yanked nice. Uh, and, and, and the nice. guy playing the veteran who he punches was the fight director. Uh, oh, <laughs> nice. So, uh, yeah. Nice. But I like the way um, Tombstone looked throwing blows and stuff. He seemed very natural. Yes. Now, sometimes, sometimes when you get, you, you hire somebody just because they're tall. But they can't fucking fight. They can't move. They can't move. There's like, yeah. There's like no technique. You know what I mean? But yeah. Tombstone, I, I I saw him throwing the blows there. I was like, yeah, you know how to fight. I'm not gonna fuck with him. Yeah, man. I mean, the, the elevator fight scene uh, with him and Hard Eight is, is brutal. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. But yeah, we're, we're gonna introduce to, to him. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil for chat why he he becomes my one of my favorite characters later in the movie. Um, hard eight hit in the bag. Now that's how you introduce your hero. Okay, that's how you introduce him. You put him in a room where it's dark with a little bit of light there, right? You got the neon lights of the of the, his name, hard eight. He walks through it up to a fucking heavy bag, right? starts beating the shit out of the heavy bag. I was like, that's it. That's how that's how you do it. That's He's how you introduce the hero. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No dialogue, just punch the no. shit out of the bag. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the, the water went down the, 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 the wrong <laughs> pipe there. See, I was, I'm excited already talking about the movie. But that's how you do it. Now, uh, Mo, he looked very natural. I mean, he was very natural in the fight scenes in Vikings. Yeah. 
Did Mo have any type of martial arts background, boxing, MMA, or anything? Or he was just he's just athletic. He's I mean he's athletic. I mean he he <laughs> uh, works really hard. So like he he listens and he takes everything on board. Um, and I mean you know all the stunties were very complimentary about Mo because. He went for it every time. It was always 110. Um, percent And I mean, like he get he gets brutalized in the film. I mean, he, even with uh, Guillaume, who plays Tombstone. Yeah. Like obviously it's a choreographed fight, but yeah. when Tombstone blocks and you punch that arm, yeah. I mean, uh, Guillaume is granite. I mean, he's rock hard. Everything yeah. is rock about him. So Mo would be getting hurt quite a lot, but he yeah. would constantly go for it. And one of the things we discussed always with the the stunt team and the fight director and with Mo was I didn't want it to look like a clean John Wick kind of right. fight. I really wanted him to look like he was really having to struggle dirty, to get dirty. through everything. And it was dirty and kind of Street a fight. little bit messy and, and, yeah. and kind of like a bit more, obviously it's still stylized, but a bit more natural and a bit more human. They live like the fight. Yeah, they live, like they right? live. Dirty. really yeah. dirty and kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, he just has to, and I think every fight he has, like he, there's always a kind of like uh, at the end of it, it's like Jesus Christ, you know, didn't expect to get through that one. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Underchild, for the for the donation. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Don't don't fuck with Tombstone. But we're introduced to Heart Eight, and uh, basically, you, you kind of get the vibe that he, you know, it's a, it's a you know Club Knuckle Dust is underground Fight Club type of setting, right? Hmm. But you kind of you kind of get the vibe that you know hard eight our boy here is kind of forced to fight right he doesn't have any kills he doesn't kill anyone but he's kind of forced to fight and uh because they have uh serena here uh, she's in charge this is her club you know she's she's as, as she says she's the main event hmm. right and um our boy here hard eight is kind of forced to fight or take a dive against rawbone yeah, uh, a little bit later because they have his girlfriend, like yeah. basically. So you gotta do it, do what we say, you know. Like, like I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna I'm do the best that I can to stay away from spoilers. <laughs> I want that to, to go watch the movie. Um, but let's see here. Oh, so then we get introduced to. I want to know what were you, what was your inspirations or ideas for? Not now, Nigel. <laughs> not now, Nigel, man. <laughs> He's so he's such a great character. Uh, and I, I wrote the part and I had Chris Patrick Simpson who plays him in mind the whole time. Chris is one of the funniest people you'll ever meet and he is an amazing actor. And I just wanted to get the, the life of a henchman that yeah. we can see where it's kind of like there's someone in every office, at every job who just gets given all the shit jobs. Yeah. Um, and he's quiet. And he's a bit like that character, you know, Office Space by Mike Judge when they keep taking his stapler and then yeah. they move into the basement and he's just losing his shit all the time. Yeah. Uh, and so it was just kind of that, how do we get a henchman in here who just wants yeah. to do his job, but he's right. constantly shit on. <laughs> and this elevator scene cracked me up too. <laughs> I was already laughing. Uh, but yeah, I was just like, okay, that, that makes perfect sense. Because you don't really see that actually. You don't see the life of a henchman no. uh, type of, a type of uh, or at least that that topic brought up in action films. Usually the henchmen are just there to die. But yeah, yeah not now Nigel cracked me up. Yeah, uh, they're, they're there to look cool and die and, you know, threaten the lead guy. And I mean, one of the first things Nigel gets is a hug. Uh, <laughs> it's just like, he's so nice. <laughs> and he's like all smile. And he's all he's all happy about it because nobody else treats him that, that way. You know? <laughs> he's all happy about it. Oh my God! Now, now, was there was there any ad, ad libbing from that actor? Um, yeah, there was. Much... he was he was one of the so the script was quite tightly written, obviously because it's so it weaves around so much. You can't fuck around with it too much. You have to say certain things, or you're not going to get a thread later on. But right. with him, I did. He was one of the actors. I said, look, play around. Him and Gethin, who plays Jeremiah, I said, play around a little bit because I know. So the scene where he's um, waiting for our date and there's uh, all the goons with the cocaine and stuff. Yeah. We were really fucking around uh, with that quite a lot. Okay. With okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the, just bringing up, I think that's pretty fun. That's pretty funny, man. Bringing up the life of a henchman aspect in an action comedy uh, is hilarious because especially at the end, again, no spoilers, but when he goes on his rant 
And he's all like, I'm going to unionize. <laughs> Just hearing a henchman talking about unis- unionization. It's hilarious. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, but, yeah, not now, Nigel. Is is pretty is pretty funny, man. I, I was cracking up with him. Um, so yeah, so now let's get to what might be the scariest man in existence, uh, uh, which is hilarious because you said him and Tombstone are both sweethearts uh, in real life. But uh, yeah, Raw Bone. I kind of I kind of wish Raw Bone was in the movie a little bit longer. Yeah, uh, but uh, and he comes in and serves his purpose quickly. But uh, yeah, Chad, uh, take a look at this motherfucker right here. Look at this guy. Uh yeah no 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 I'm good I'm good I'm good no I'm good no I'm not, I don't want to fight I don't want to fight that no fuck that no yeah this guy is huge like he's, he's massive big. and he's he's bigger than this photo makes him look he's actually like he's huge yeah, this like, photo makes him when look he goes cool. like this to the crowd to hype him up yeah and he, it's like it's insane his chest and back are like two of me. Yes, put together, and I'm oh, already huge. He is absolutely huge. I mean, ha- when you're directing him, obviously you have to constantly look up. Um, you, you know, it's kind of like, yeah. I mean, look at that back. Yeah, that's insane. It's it's um, it's, it's ridiculous. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, with all the tattoos as well, he looks even e- even bigger. Yeah, I was like, dude, this is insane. Because because after Tombstone shows up, I was like, holy crap, this guy's huge. And then, like, what, five minutes later, Raw Bone shows up. I'm like, oh, my God. That's why I, I was joking earlier. Is everyone out there in the UK giants? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to fuck around when I go out there, all right? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks again, Son and Child, for the donation. He's my quest is to buy every top ten horror film since Variety started compiling box office grosses in 1922. is still going strong, but I... Also love indie films to watch something great tonight, guys. He's a huge movie collector guy. That's awesome, man. Thanks for donating uh, uh, to the channel. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Raw Bone. If you ever run into him out there, tell him Fat Samurai guy <laughs> says, "What's up? Keep up, good, keep up the good work." And uh, I will not fuck with him. Well, yeah, <laughs> keep up the good work uh, and just always be looking up. It's fine. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Is he is he bigger than the mountain? <laughs> Dude, it's honestly like it, it is un. As soon as regular people like myself see him, they can't help but like run, ask for a photo, kind of like <laughs> he is. Uh, he is, um, you know, like Madden to swords, but in a man. Yeah, yeah, like it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. It's pretty impressive. Uh, let's see here, where are we at here? Yeah, so at this point, Hard Eight escapes. We got some cool badass shootouts. Him trying to escape to do what he needs to do. And then the movie does something I wasn't expecting. Again, to try to do my best to stay away from spoilers. Uh, he escapes. Then something happens later. And he ends up going back for revenge. And then he gets captured by the police. And he gets interrogated. And then the movie uh, does something I wasn't expecting. And it's kind of like told in real time and flashbacks at the same time. Yeah, which was which was very interesting. I was like, "Oh, okay, that's what we're doing here." But yeah, I enjoyed that. All right, so <laughs> before before um, um, he gets uh, captured or, or detained by the cops, we have a scene right here. <laughs> oh man, trying to trying to be badasses and bust through the door. <laughs> Fuck, they forgot the ram. <laughs> It was so funny when she's just like, <laughs> he's like, you forgot the ram. You're like, yeah, I forgot the ram. You didn't bring the ram? You didn't say to bring the ram. I forgot. It was just pretty funny. <laughs> was rambling about bringing the ram. She's like, bring the fucking ram. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, a uh, guy comes up with bolt cutters out of nowhere and just snips the door. <laughs> Again, have the movie having that tone of, uh, of, of comedic elements thrown in there. Now, speaking of comedic elements, you and your partner, man, were pretty funny. Oh, I, thank enjoyed, you, man. I enjoyed that a lot. And I think, uh, you know, when, when, our, when our guy here, you know, he ends up being detained, or, uh, Mo here, when he's in the interrogation room hmm. from, you know, in real time, 
throughout the movie. When you and your buddy go in there, man, it's pretty hilarious. He's like the he's like the computer nerd expert, right? Yeah, in a way. Uh, but <laughs> that scene where <laughs> you guys are just looking at from the outside, looking through the window at Mo at Hard Eight, <laughs> and then he's like, "All right, we need to do a." A good cop, good cop, bad cop. <laughs> and, he turned, and he turned to your partner. He's like, "I need you to be a bad cop." And he's all like, "I'm gonna be a bad. Am I a bad cop?" And you were like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's pretty yeah, funny. Dave, Dave's good, man. Like he's a he's a he's an actor. He's a stand up comedian primarily. That's um, him, on Dave, the, uh, him on the left there, but the glasses are on for chat. And yeah. uh, and and this scene here actually uh, was originally. It would have been my character McCready playing the Jamie Winstone part. Okay. Uh, and but Jamie uh, was smashing the part so much when we were doing it, and I was kind of like, "Man, I want more of Jamie in the film." So I said, "Look, let's switch it up. You take this part of the scene um, and lead the scene." Uh, and I think it's even cooler because you got these three guys who are just like winding her up to such an extent. Um, and you've got this woman who's like, for fuck's sake, can someone just do one of their jobs? Um, she's she's fantastic in, in that scene. I like earlier when you and your partner are sitting in the in the car. She like you roll the window down, and she leans in. She's like, "What the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> we're, we're, we're on a raid. <laughs> what are you doing? Just sitting in here." But yeah, it was pretty funny, man. Um, uh, I think one of my other favorite scenes is when our uh, our boy here on the left with the glasses. What's his name again? Dave Bibby who plays Hooper. Hooper. Yeah. When he's like being challenged <laughs> to find out more, you know, go and <laughs> just try to break yeah. the code, the government code and the computer so he can get more information about Mo. Uh, and he starts like almost having like an orgasm while he's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and then out of nowhere, and then you and, and her are like being grossed out on the side. You're like, what the hell is going on? And then he starts rambling. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then out of nowhere, he goes, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, my mom's home early. Oh, I can't stop. <laughs> I can't stop. I have to finish. Oh, my God, it was dying. Yeah, man. He was a, So there's like, everyone else is like, oh, what were the hacker film influences for that scene? And I'm like, uh, Weird Science uh, is the main, is all the inspiration for that scene. <laughs> <laughs> Weird Science. Another, cl another classic from the 80s. Absolutely classic. I'm noticing a trend here. All the movies yes. you talk about are from the 80s. Big 80s sorry. Fan. Sorry. Sorry. Was it Generation Z now? What the fuck? Generation Z. Yeah. yeah all, these Generation Z. all these labels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, uh, now we get to, uh, especially with the flashbacks. So we have Mo in real time being interrogated, Heart 8. And then mm -hmm. there are flashbacks to, to show all the action and all the violence and Everybody he had to fight to get to where he was trying to get to. So ends up he ends up fighting TikTok. Now, what was the inspiration for this character? Um, I really wanted to uh someone's like I was like, well, I want to put like a there's a Wild West, a Western theme running through the film. Yes. Um, and I was like, well, you know, I want a fucking cowboy in there, man. Uh like an actual cowboy. Um, and people were like, you can't have a cowboy. Uh and it no one ever says, oh, there's a cowboy in it, because he fits so well within the universe. Yeah. Um, and then Sebastian came on, and then we worked on, um, you know, being like a, a Congolese French uh, kind of guy. Um, and it just went from there, really. I mean, he, he's such a badass character. Yeah. And it looks, and I, I think it sets up the universe that we're in really well, because it's really out there. And yeah. From the very beginning, you're like, okay, we're going to 11. That's fine. Pretty uh, much. Pretty Let's much. Uh, my favorite part of the of their fight is the gun blade, the yes. pistol blade. We we need this more in action movies. It's I don't yes, care dude. if it's not practical and doesn't make sense. I don't care. It's fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! Oh shit! You got the prop. You got the prop, man. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Can you can you show it up to the camera for chat a little bit more? So it's brass knuckle handles. Brass knuckle handles. Oh, that's awesome, man. And there's a blade that comes out there, which is right from the shoot. Yeah, there um, you go. How cool is that? This is made by uh, designed by Steve Leak, who is our armorer. Um, nice. Made all the beautiful weapons in the film. That's awesome. Look at that. Look at that chat. We're getting exclusives. 
<laughs> for, the, for the armory because I didn't have an armory originally. And uh, he was like, "Look, man, you need let's get you an armory." And he turned up with all these guns, and uh, he brought me the, um, the the shotgun from Hard Target. Nice, uh, yes, dude. He bought the 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 knife from Predator, <laughs> which is all on the wall. Uh, oh. There's lots of, basically all the guns are from films he's done or you know he's bought himself sort of thing. So this whole yeah. wall is a collection of like awesome movie memorabilia. Nice, nice. Yeah, I love the gun blade. More gun blades in movie. They're just, they're just too much. They're just too much fun. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so now what's interesting about this film is that it's got the comedic. Not, not now Nigel moments, right? And you got the over-the-top moments, uh, cranking it up to 11 moments right off the bat. But then we actually, we got some, let's get real now. Let's get real. Let's sit down. Let's get a little bit more serious now. Let's take a break. Yeah. And I enjoyed all of the scenes between these two. Yes. And... Yeah. Both of the both of them really good actors. Yeah, really, 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 good. really, really phenomenal actors. And you know, it, 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 it you know, I, I was already impressed with him, with Mo on Vikings, hmm. and and what happened to his character? I was like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. spoilers, Chad. But I was like, that's kind of fucked up. But uh, uh, he already impressed me with Vikings, and she and her her acting is really good in The Witch. Yeah, and, she's a actress. Yeah, and it comes natural. You can tell it comes natural from these two. Uh, but when he's sitting down talking about uh, his military past, because mm. he used to be a Marine, and you know, I'm looking at that scene, and I'm like, you know what? I mean, it's a, it's a good scene. It's a great scene, actually. And you got two really good actors uh, doing a great job here. But I was just like, you know what? Mo needs to be in more shit. Yeah. Like he 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 has something. Yes. He really does. Well, like, so, yeah, he has that kind of I'll go back to it, but like that kind of everyman quality that a house yes. board or a Kurt Russell has, where he can do the serious, he can do the fights, he can do the comedy. Uh, yeah. he has everything going on. Uh, as an actor, uh, and I think in this film, you know, one of the things I think that makes the film work is these two, and the film always was the, absolutely the linchpin was these two in their conversation. Like, if they were bad actors, it would have all fallen apart and you'd have oh, no yeah. in the film. But um, their sparring in that is, you know, it's basically one long fight sequence, but with dialogue was the kind of aim uh, that we were going for. Yeah, but he, but you know, I, I really hope, uh, uh, from the success of Knuckle Dust, I hope Mo uh, gets more work. Um, and uh, we see him in a lot more projects because he's he's really good, he had he does have something, he has the it. Well, last year he shot the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequel, which is um, a direct sequel to the first film, I believe. What, yeah, he's in that, he's in that, bro. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Well, now no, I no, I'm excited to see it now. <laughs> yeah. <me too. laughs> wow. When is that supposed to come out? Uh, I don't know. I don't know where anything is coming out anymore. Oh, well, that's true start. because of what's going on. Um, so I think they, I imagine they want to do theaters, but um, yeah. So he's in that. So hopefully that will kick him up even even. Oh, more. I hope so because yeah. he, he he's just him sitting there talking, just dialogue, and yeah. sometimes you know because we we love the flash, right? We love yeah. the bang, the boom. You know, we love the flash, but sometimes it's the small, quiet moments that grabs your attention. Hmm. You know, and uh, he was he was really good at that. Well, cool, that's awesome. There you go, chat. Another exclusive from James. <laughs> right, we're seeing props from the movie. We're getting exclusives. All right, exclusive movie news. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, but by the way, this guy wasn't that bad. He's all right. You he know? was the he was the actor who cost the least. <laughs> he works for food. So he that's works like, for food. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But yeah, I just wanted to point I just wanted to highlight that they them two together were very very good. Yeah, yeah. Very, very really good. Good. Uh, you know, and we we were really lucky to get Kate. I mean, she's an exceptional actress. She's really in demand. 
Um, you know, I mean, she's just shot the new Rob Eggers film, uh, I think Northman. Um, she's always working. So we were really lucky to get her. Um, and then we knew that we couldn't get an actor who could just fight. We had to, and that was the difficulty with the part because we weren't saying it's just a fight film. You just need to fight. It's cool. Or it's right. just an acting film. You don't need to fight. And we're going to get a stunt double for you all the time. It had to be both all the time because I wanted yeah. to make sure that the fights weren't frenetically cut so you don't see the fight because it really annoys me. So we really wanted to see Mo in the fight sequence and his body really getting hammered. So it's a big job from him and I, I think he smashed it. Yeah, um, yeah, he did. He did smash it. And I noticed the um, throughout the movie, the fights got better. Yeah. Like the, the, the filming of the fights mm -hmm. got actually better. There was less quick cut editing and, and all that. Yeah. And uh, that was awesome too. You know, yeah. that was awesome. Too, because that everybody knows movie dojo army chat they know that pisses me off and i throw shit yeah. at tv because it's yeah. just like you fucked it all up you <laughs> up. who yeah. cares if they got two badasses doing this amazing fight choreography and working for you know trying to perfect the fight for hours and days yeah but it's all this shit it's all that and it's fastly cut it's very close and you can't see you know it's all like this yeah and like yeah. who's hitting who it's like uh, jesus it's it's really annoying. So yeah, we were really at the very beginning. We were kind of like we want all the fights to um, get bigger and more brutal as they go. So there's a development on the fights as well. So I think there is a tendency as well for fights, especially when it's one style of fight, to yeah. become uh, bl like blasé. You just go through it after a while, and you're like, okay, there's lots of gunfire. I'm tuning out a right. little bit. So we really wanted to make sure each one was its own. Hopefully, everyone has their own different favorite fight sequence from the film. Speaking of, <laughs> perfect timing. My favorite fight in the movie. That's right. We get a return. <laughs> I thought I was, like I was saying earlier, I thought I was seeing shit in the opening credits. I was thought I was seeing shit in the opening credits. But no, 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 no. Nay, nay. <laughs> when he gets to fight the s &M gang. <laughs> The dildo nunchucks return. Yes. They are confirmed. <laughs> Anybody out there that thought, hey, you know what? We need an action movie with some dildo nunchucks at some point. This is your movie. It happens. <laughs> it's a lot like Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> but this is my favorite fight scene in the movie. Great. Uh, this is my favorite fight scene. Um, I just love the widescreen, the way it was filmed. Um, all the stunt, the stunt people involved were fucking badasses. You can't, yeah. you, 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 you gotta love, like, someone's brawling over here, someone's brawling, fuck it, I'm just gonna push the guy in the nuts. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a leg, <laughs> I'm gonna break a leg, fuck it. Oh, shit! Female does a fucking wrestling hurricanrana on me. Oh, I'm gonna spin it around, reverse it, backbreaker. <laughs> right? I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm liking this. I'm, I'm liking this, but yeah. Uh, I, this is this is my favorite fight in the movie, like action sequence. Like this is, I just love the way it filmed was filmed. Hmm. Any inspiration, maybe from Old Boy and other movies? Yeah, the, the Old Boy. Uh, obviously, I mean, it's such a famous corridor sequence, um, yeah. and I really love the Old Boy scene because uh, he gets the, battered in it. Like it looks painful. The, the Korean, old, the so, Korean Old Boy. Yeah, the Korean. Yeah, the Korean Old Boy. <laughs> I, I only did five minutes of the original. Uh, oh, but no, the um, American version, I just couldn't. The original's too good. I mean, I just don't yeah. know why you make it a glossy version. You but, can't, um, you can't remake it. You can't do it. And he looks so pained the whole way through. And I thought, you know, what is this scene missing? And I thought, dildos. So, uh, <laughs> went with that. Uh, also, another one, another influence on it was like, um, you know, a, a computer game vibe, you know, like um, scrolling left to yeah. right. Kind oh, of yeah. Vibe. I can see that. So, yeah. I, quite, so I mean, if you look at old old computer games uh, from the eighties, you know the proper arcade ones, you always have guys like Streets of Fire, uh, Streets of Rage, and stuff like that, yeah. all gimped up and masked up, and all this yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that, like Goon Two or whatever. Yeah. Final um, fight. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I mean, and that's all he has to do in that fight is get from one side to the other, left to right. Yeah, yeah. This this was my favorite fight scene in the movie. I I really enjoyed it. <laughs> we got fucking. Was that a, was that a spike bat or was that a bat with uh 
It's a spiked bat with a dildo at the end. <laughs> uh, on the left hand side, that you've got a <laughs> grip is a dildo. I missed that for so long. <laughs> I missed that, which is even more hilarious now. Now, when I go back and watch it, I got to look for that now. Uh, I, I would have loved, I wish, I wish that whoever had the dildo nunchucks actually had a scene with them. Yeah. Well, we were going to, I thought to myself, we were kind of like, do we really point it out? And I was like, let's not point it out too much. And then when okay. people are watching it, because there's a close up of Mo with the dildo nunchucks like here, like this. And right. I was like, the audience, I think, are going to be like, oh, he's getting choked out. But could be like, are they, is he getting choked out with dildos on a chain? Right. Like, okay. Like, hey, okay. Like, I got it. Sure. Yeah. So it's a yeah. bit more of a kind of like, like you just did with the bat. Like, is there a dildo on the end of the bat? <laughs> it's more of a surprise than, uh, yeah, exactly. Blatant, yeah. Hey, this is the joke type of thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I enjoyed this. I could have used a uh, an extra minute. <laughs> yeah, because you know me, you know me. I, I, just, <laughs> I just I just enjoy that kind of stuff. But yeah, that was my favorite. Uh, let's see here. Um, and then you know we have a finale again. No spoilers. Uh, but the fight uh, with Tombstone mm -hmm. in the elevator with a guy that huge. Yes, this guy. This guy for chat. How in the world did you guys pull that off? <laughs> Well, uh, we, I mean, it was a tight budget, you know, but like right. uh, one of the things we was adamant on is uh, we had to have a complete build on the elevator. So every part of the elevator came apart. Um, so we could slide the walls and the ceiling and everything in and out. Um, oh, shit. And that was the only way to do it. Otherwise, it's going to be, again, it would be too close and it'd be a mess. So okay. um, our fight director and, uh, you know, put that all together. And so basically, yeah, we would just remove the walls. So oh, so that's and awesome. Um, yeah. yeah, it's interesting because it's a, it's a it's a small space for a guy that big, yeah. uh, and it is brutal. I mean, that elevator got yeah. brutalized. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and going back to what you said earlier, how you wanted the fights to be not clean, but kind of down and dirty and gritty yeah. and grimy and street fight brawling uh, kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> that one part of the fight makes me laugh. I don't know what was meant to be funny, but uh, they're just pounding each other, right? Yeah. And I don't, I, I'm trying to remember. Did he try to hit and help me out here? He tried to hit Mo Hard Eight. Yeah. And Hard Eight blocked it, or he tried to punch it. But I'm trying to remember. But after that happened, Hard Eight's like Jesus. <laughs> yeah. He tried. He tries to hit Tombstone, and, okay. uh, and that was an ad lib from Mo. And it was because <laughs> Tombstone was such granite, and he was just like Jesus Christ. He was absolute. Every time he hit him, he was getting so painful. It was so painful. Oh, and I was just kind of like, well, go, go with it. Like, yeah. it, that's what it's like. Like, use it. And it's a really funny, nice moment. Yeah, that makes me laugh, man. I was busting up. Well, it figures it was an ad lib because Mo's the man. But yeah, yeah. Just, just throwing in these comedic elements. And it's, it's all about the face expressions with this guy. Yeah. Like, it's just his face expressions. It's just like, all right, fuck. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh yeah, I enjoyed Tombstone a lot. And uh again, stay away from spoilers, but we'll at least say there's some twists and some turns and very unexpected things happen. I did not the whole the whole third act of the finale hmm. was not expecting any of that at all. Uh yeah. but it was good. This was this this was one of those subvert your expectations, but at least with a nice payoff. Yes. Because every time directors say that, that means everyone hated their movie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Last Jedi. The Last yeah. Jedi. <clears throat> People didn't get it. And uh, it was subverting expectations. So I think in 40 years, people will be like, yeah, James Carmack is a genius. Uh, but right now, <laughs> people just don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm glad to hear it was good. I'm glad to hear you got the end of it, so that's good. Thank you. Well, yeah, it was something different. It was fresh. Yeah, you know, I was just not expecting it. And again, stay away from spoilers for chat because I want chat to check out the movie. I'm, I will at least say this: the last line of the film. Now the real hunt begins. And now I gotta ask, within without spoiling anything, <laughs> sequel maybe. That is the the aim, the hope. Yes, uh, is to open up. I mean, the thing with the film is it it has so many questions left at the end for who we've just 
followed. Right. Um, it means that we can kind of um, kind of start a whole new world and expand it. Yeah. Um, so the the it's meant to be a trilogy, and so the second one is fleshed out. Um, oh yeah. So have to see how it goes. Nice, nice. Well, I, I fingers crossed. I really hope uh, we get a trilogy, and I'm happy just to get a second movie. Yeah. I want to see yeah. more of these characters because uh, I really like Mo. I really like Hard Eight. Um, but uh, yeah, I really want to see more dildo nunchucks. <laughs> in the, in the, but the thing the... is, I have to up that now. So, huh? oh yeah, up it. So, oh, yeah. how are you gonna do that? Vibrating dildos. <laughs> so that's the only way. A room of vibrating dildos. Dildo rocket launcher. Yeah, dildo rocket launcher. <laughs> uh, James took it too far. Uh, I'm just subverting expectations. You just um, don't get it. it. <laughs> you just don't get it. You don't get it. Um, an, another another vibe that I got about the movie, watching it, is like you could tell when you're watching a movie, you could tell that the cast had a blast making it. And uh, I mean, just look at this photo right here. You know, it looks like yeah. everyone had a blast and had a lot of fun uh, making this movie, coming together just to make a fun, crazy, insane over the top movie that's linked with frozen <laughs> and uh you know and that that's that's you could you, you get that vibe across the screen uh, across yeah. the screen when you watch the movie you know you yeah. get that vibe and uh i'm happy uh that you guys made this movie you completed it and i'm excited about a sequel to it and i hope you know we'll get that trilogy but but now now so again chat check out knuckle dust if you have not seen it now Let's get back to talking about future projects here, my friend. Because <laughs> you said something about samurai earlier, and I am that samurai guy. So now I'm like, oh, my ears are perky, you know. Now I'm like, so what's what's going on for future projects for Kermac besides the sequel and, and Knuckle Dust? What is what is next for you, my my friend? So I can't say too much about it because we're still working on it. It's super early, but it is a, a, a genre blend of a film again, um, and uh, it, it may be it might be uh, a Wild West serial killer samurai film. Sold. That's it. That's I'm sold. It. That's, that's where, 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 where do I pay? Where do I pay for the ticket? No, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm pre-ordering the ticket to the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> There's this film that's not made yet, but I want to pre-order. Uh, <laughs> oh man! But yeah, I'm sold. I'm sold right there. And um, besides what you're doing right now, because you're living the dream right now, my friend, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very happy for you and your success and future success. Um, but is there a dream do you have a dream project or you're already working on it right now is there something that you really want to do in the future or you're already doing it right now could be the could be the movie you just mentioned to me that I mean, could be that, um, yeah i mean that that's uh, that's getting there to be that's getting to the point with the script where i'm like okay i'm like really excited by this now this is you know because it, it was it was wild west serial killer and then as i was writing it you know the lead guy I was like, oh, he had his has his katana on his back, and I was as he rides into town. I was like, okay. yes, yeah, I know, I know where I'm at now. This is super sweet. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's like it, 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 there's a lot of remakes and stuff. Every film I really love, I wouldn't want to touch, um, and because there's a reason I really love it. Right. Uh, you know, I think it's perfect. So don't touch what's perfect. Right. Um, I don't know. I think there's a lot of. I, I mean, I think there's a lot of computer games. I think would be really cool. Mm. Um, yeah, I was playing uh, a board mm. arcade arcade machine, and uh, was playing uh, Cadillacs and dinosaurs. Have you played yeah. that? Of that? Capcom, so cool. right? Yeah, yeah, it's so cool. Um, well, it's not, you sound like the perfect guy to make a live action movie adaptation of that. <laughs> yeah, if you to make an action film of Cadillacs and dinosaurs kicking the Dude. shit up, it, 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 it's up my fucking alleyway. Um, yeah. You know, something like that. I think something like, you know, I was looking at Streets of Rage as well. It was like super cool. I've been uh, wanting a Streets of Rage movie for years. And every and, and growing up, you know, well, when I was those early early teens, you got Blockbuster Video around and in, in, in mom and pop video shops. And I remember mm -hmm. always going in there and I remember seeing a movie called Streets of Rage. 
and it was a martial arts movie, and it drove me nuts. Yeah. Every time I'd see it, I was just like, I turned the box <laughs> because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't based off the game or anything. I was like, come yeah. on, you know. But dude, if you do a Streets of Rage movie, I'll lose. I'll lose it. Oh man, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd love that. I think doing an eighties kind of thing like that would be super cool if you can get it right. And that's yeah. actually based on Streets of Fire. There you go. They took inspiration from Streets of Fire. Oh really? Oh, I didn't. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. And uh, and I'd really like to do, which I have an idea for, but like an actual musical that is an action film. Um, right. So an action musical. So taking Streets of Fire a step further. Okay. Um, so I'd quite like to do an adult R-rated kind of action musical. I think it'd be pretty sweet. I'm sold for that too. Uh, Brolicon says, make a Patreon for your next project and uh, give us perks. We'll pay for it for perks. There you go. I'll let Ideas. You know. <laughs> Ideas. Ideas, yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go. Uh, he remembers seeing the poster of Streets on Fire and uh, thinking fi uh, finally Streets of Rage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, but, the, guy, yeah. the lead guy is called Cody, right? In Streets of Rage. Is that right? Or is Axel, Axel Cody? Axel, Adam, and Blaze. And Blaze. Oh, Blaze. Yeah. And then the second one was uh, We skate skate that was it yeah he was badass skate was and badass. i'm i'm completely fired because that's my favorite beat em up franchise and i'm yeah. so fired because we got streets of rage 4 yeah. and i heard it was awesome and i've had it i bought it like last year and haven't played it i'm fine i'm, I'm so fired i'll get to it though I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do some more let's plays for the you're a busy guy you're a busy guy man yeah that's true actually <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but not too busy to take time out for badasses <laughs> that make badass movies. That's right. You heard it here first, folks. Confirm Cadillacs and Dinosaurs movie coming. <laughs> <laughs> this guy right here, John Let's Wick. The dinosaur. John, John Wick better be scared of this this motherfucker right here. All right, John Wick don't want none of this. He don't want none of this. That, that's all I need is beef with Keanu Reeves, man. <laughs> <laughs> He'd kick the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. He, uh, the, he's always been a very likable actor uh, throughout his career, even during the time where people would make fun of how he acts and don't they didn't really consider him a good actor. But he, everyone still watched his movies because he's a likable. He's a likable guy. Yeah, he's a very likable actor. I mean, and he's been in. A, I mean, he. Most of his films are the best. The best films of all. I mean, Speed is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, you know, The Matrix, obviously. Point Break. Yep. Uh, you know that that was one of the things that Mo was most excited about was having a Point Break moment where he's on his back and he shoots up in the air and unloads the entire gun. In, oh in shit! Film. Yeah, I see. I can see that. Yeah. That was shoot point break moment. Yeah, yeah. All he needed to do was, uh, you know, make a complete. And just yell, just scream in the air, and just go ah! <laughs> shoot, at, <laughs> shoot at nothing in the air. Ah! <laughs> there you go. Oh man, but yeah, man. Uh, I don't want to keep you too long. How much longer can you hang out? Yeah, I'm all good, man. I'm all good. You sure? Yeah, okay. yeah, of course. I don't want to. I don't want to keep you too long. But no, I'm having no, a blast no. talking movies with you, man. This is a lot yeah, of fun. Man. And I would be. I would love to have you back on the channel just to talk movies. Oh yeah, anytime. Um, have you uh, came across my Is It Really That Bad series that I have on the channel? I have, yeah. Hey, send me a message if you got some uh, some ones out there that well, you yeah, like man. really I good movies. It. Like you really like these movies, but the ratings are atrocious. And then we could talk about it, man. That'd be a lot of fun. Dude, that's like literally my Blu-ray collection. Because <laughs> <laughs> you had let, a, you, let you, me you, guess. you had the Phantom. Have you done the Phantom yet? Oh, that's Monday's. Episode. That's Monday. That's a, I love that film. Nice. That's when comic book movies, man, were like, you know, not two hundred million dollar films. Right. Just uh, just for shits and giggles, I'm looking up right now. Rotten Tomatoes. I just want to see what Streets on Fire has. I just, I'm just curious. Just curious. I have a feeling it's going to be some bullshit. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm almost here. Here we go. It must be quite high by now. Think so. I think so. All right, okay. You're right. It's good. Yeah. All right. Was it like eight, good. Hmm? 
AI 67 percent 67 percent yeah which yeah, is good i mean it's certified yeah. correct yeah yeah seven, and then seven. the audience the audience has it at 70 so it's yeah. it's good it's safe yeah <laughs> but you know you know if it was low you know me and you would have been like what we did an episode man yeah i don't know what they're talking about uh another uh uh series i'm starting on the channel is the versus series Right. And we just recently did the Warriors versus the Wanderers versus the Outsiders. The yeah. Warriors, the Warriors won that. Yeah. Uh, but next week, next Thursday is going to be Top Gun versus Iron Eagle. Iron Eagle, man, I love Iron Eagle. Here we go. Virginia is I've on never the seen it. Oh man, enjoy. So it's perfect. Yeah, yeah this is perfect. classic Louis Gossett Jr. again. Uh, in my, you know, I think my favorite Punisher version of Punisher. Nice, dude. Luke, Luke Gus Jr. He's just one of those fantastic actors that he will, he will, he will put out the same effort <laughs> in a million dollar movie in a five thousand <laughs> dollar yeah. movie. And I'll never forget that scene. I mean, my wife were sitting down watching the Dolph Lundgren's Punisher, and you have that scene where he comes to visit Frank Castle in prison. Yeah, and he's just like, that was like that was literally, and the Academy Award goes to <laughs> like yeah. that was insane. It's a it's beautiful like, was so no good. He's like, yeah. how, many you, how many? He's like slapping him. He's like, how many did you kill, man? I'm like it was like, I, I, you know, he's great. He, he, Lou Gossett is great, man. He's yeah, great. he's really good. There we go, uh, uh, my boy here, Nina Lusick, uh, all the way from Germany, showing up here. All right. Nice. We've got people all over the world that come by the channel. That's right. Well, uh, the, film, he, the film comes out in Germany, I think, in March. Um, which one? And, uh, Germany were actually the only country so far to put the dildos on the DVD cover. <laughs> <laughs> wow. They don't give a fuck, man. They're like, they're hardcore fuck. over here. Fuck if anyone gets this, it's going to be Germany. So it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah but uh, Nina, he's an actor also out there. Uh, and, and, and he's trying to get into filmmaking. He's done he's done a lot of work already. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna try to have him on the show one day, and we'll talk movies. Okay. Just just to, just to shoot the shit. But he uh, dubbed yesterday for uh, the German version of Godzilla vs Kong coming out. Nice. So he's been doing some dubbing work. So that's really awesome. So props, Nina, keep up the good work, my friend. And uh, here's a big question, and it's it's torturing me. This this question here, I get almost every stream, and it tortures me because I cannot watch it out here. The uh, only way the only way I can watch it is if I pay and order AMC Plus. Right. And I'm already paying for too much streaming services already. Yeah. You know, I'd rather wait and, and buy it on Blu-ray because I want to own it. Yeah, and then I can review it or talk about it. But uh, have you, you know, have you seen Games of London? I haven't seen it yet. Obviously, I love I love the director. Um, but uh, Olivier, who plays Rawbone, was actually in that. Um, and Steve Leake, who was our armor, did the armory for Gangs of London. Nice, nice. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing nothing but good things. That's badass, yeah. you know. And um, <laughs> which I'm gonna call it. Um, I just heard from my buddy Lee Lee B. Golden. From Kim, excuse me, Film Combat Syndicate. Um, he announced he he posted a, a a kind of an update on his channel that so kind of two updates, and I was like, whoa. One of them is uh, Gareth Evans. Uh, uh, Gareth Evans, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is doing an action project with Tom Hardy. Oh wow! It's called Havoc. So oh. I'm like, it's kind of funny because we just watched Dark Knight Rises last night. And you know, <laughs> out of the three, you know, Dark Knight's my favorite out of the three Nolan Batmans. But Dark Knight Rises, very sloppy. There's a lot of flaws to it, but it's still at the end of the day a good ending to the trilogy. Yes, it's still entertaining. Yeah, it's still there's a lot of problems in that third act, but it's still yeah. a very entertaining movie. And um, uh, it's not like the Blade Trinity. Yes, of Blade trilogy. You know what I mean? It's not like that. Yes, it's, it's, still, it's still very good. Action's good. Yeah, you know, it's just very sloppy storytelling in the third act. But, but I couldn't, I could not get over Bane because it's been a long time watching Tom Hardy's Bane, and it's hilarious because when you're watching it, 
he sounds like a you know a James Bond villain from the sixties. You know, yeah. Like, <laughs> no, Mister Bond, I expect you to die. <laughs> you know, that's what he sounds like, and it's it's so funny. But what's so what's 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 funny though, is that yeah, it's kind of comedic at points, but at the same time, it has become iconic, and now that's all you think of when you think of Bane is yeah. him sounding like that. <laughs> For better or for worse, you know. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's pretty funny. So I mean, since I got you here, thoughts on Tom Hardy as Bane? Dawson, I, I mean, he looks epic. I mean, it's the one thing I actually remember from the film mm -hmm. is Bane. Yeah, uh, he's really stand out. He looks amazing, uh, and he makes him. Uh, obviously, that's the script as well, but. I mean, in Batman and Robin, obviously, Bane was just this kind of like large man in a mask, whereas right. this was kind of like the mask was a part of his character and you got a sense of who the person was. And um, right. so I enjoyed him as Bane. I mean, I really like Tom Hardy. I think he's yeah. an exceptional. Well, he, he, he is, he is, he's the most memorable. I agree with you. He's the most memorable thing in that movie. But I, I just it's, it's kind of a it's just funny. It's like I I laugh at his voice. But at the same time, it works. It's weird. Yeah. It's just strange, you know. Oh, uh, <laughs> Bane, uh, Commissioner Gordon got away. Follow him. <laughs> <laughs> it's too funny, but it's great. It's weird, yeah. you know. It's well, almost like probably go, you know, they do the kind of low, kind of, you know, Bane, I'm a bad guy. And he's gone really high pitched with it. And you're kind of like, oh, you've done the exact opposite of what 90% yeah. of actors would do. It's super cool. Yeah. And it's, it's just, it's so, it's, it's just, it's weird, but it, it works. It works for some reason. It's like, I'm going to break you, but first, I'm going to break you physically and then mentally. <laughs> you know, that's kind of how he's, you know, which is what he did. Uh, but yeah, Havoc already sounds like a badass title. You got a badass director. Yeah. Tom Hardy kind of needs a win after. Um, uh, Van Hammond? No, no. <laughs> oh, Capone. Capone. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I heard nothing but horrible things about it. Um, I haven't seen it. I'm, see it. I'm sure it's probably one of those movies where he's good, hmm. but the storytelling was bad. I don't know. I mean, generally, he's good in everything. Pretty much. Like, he's good, he's really good in. Um, have you seen Lawless? Uh, it's like a yes. pro prohibition western. I mean, yes. he, he wears a cardigan all the way through the film, but and he smokes a cigar, and you're just like, this is the most badass cardigan wearing man I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I, I would watch a whole film with just um, Tom Hardy in a cardigan kicking the yeah. shower. I, 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 that movie was that's another underrated badass movie. It's a good movie. Even mm -hmm. Shia LaBeouf was good in that movie. He's really good in that. Um, Guy Pierce plays that freaky yeah, kind yeah. of guy, and like, yeah, yeah very cool film. I just like how the whole movie, you know, Tom Hardy, he doesn't dance. That's not his thing. He don't dance now. And then right at the end, when nobody's around, he's all like, <laughs> "Oh shit, <laughs> I, I feel it," you know, but. <laughs> Tom Hardy is also really good on Peaky Blinders. Yeah, he's very good. He's really good in that show as well. Yeah. Uh, on, oh, oh, the other the other reveal on uh, Film Combat Syndicate was okay. So after the, I don't know how you probably really liked the movie, and that's cool if you did. That's awesome. I hated Peninsula. Peninsula. Hated hated it. Is that the, the sequel? The right. Other, Equal to training. Yeah. I hate. I hated it. If you ever, right. if you ever want to see me get le legitimately mad, <laughs> watch my Peninsula rant video. Like I go <laughs> nuts. Okay. Um. So, I still don't think we need a Train to Busan remake. Right. But the most recent news that dropped is that. Uh, James Wan is producing it, and Timo, Timo, Night Comes for Us director is doing it. I'm like, nice. We got a shot at least. Is that supposed to be with Frank Grillo? Is that Frank Grillo? I don't know. The the I heard I heard the Raid remake. 
is Frank Grillo. Was supposed to be Frank. Uh, yeah. That, I don't know what the hell they're doing with that. The What has it been, 10 years? Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. I, I haven't seen Boss Level yet, but that looks pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, have you seen that yet? The Frank Grillo and Mark Gibson Boss Level? No, I'm waiting for it to come to uh, Hulu over here. And yeah. uh, I would love to watch it and review it on the Movie Dojo. That'd be great. Um, let's see here. Uh, Brolicon said, let's be real. Everyone laughed at his mask. Now COVID made everyone want to. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> people, like, people were mo laughing more at how he spoke than the mask. <laughs> but here's, here's the thing. Have you heard how he originally sounded? No. So I, I don't remember the name of the movie that had the sneak peek in IMAX theaters. But the movie came out, and they were like, hey, you get to see the first opening 10 minutes of Dark Knight Rises. And I don't remember the name. I don't remember the name of the movie, but me and my buddy went to go see it. And it was the opening airplane sequence where, mm -hmm. you know, you take the mask off. That, that, not the mask, the, uh, the hood. Yeah. You see Bane for the first time. He's tied up. And then the guy goes, if I take the... If I take the mask off, is it going to hurt? You know, and, you know, Bane goes, for you, right? But it, it his original voice was actually worse. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? yeah. His, and then they changed, and that's maybe, maybe they got, maybe they got feedback from early mm -hmm. screeners from that test, 10 minute test. Yeah. And then maybe they just said, Tom, just change your voice and talk differently. And then we have the, I'm going to break you voice now. But uh yeah. but yeah, it was worse because he tried to sound like the usual, like I'm going to you know, I'm going to break you. Like it was like that, but it was so distorted and deep that right. me and my buddy me and my buddy the whole time were like, What the fuck is he saying? Hmm. It was weird. We could not understand what Bane was saying the whole time. We were like, What is he what is he saying? <laughs> so that's not good. Well, at least at least with that, the ADR must have been easy because you don't have to match up any lips or anything. So right, uh, that's probably what they did too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the dream. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was weird. It was like too too not Darth Vader esque, but it was too deep and distorted that I was just like, we were excited. We're like, oh shit, we're seeing Bane for the first time. And then when he started talking, me and my buddy were like, dude, what is he saying? <laughs> that's not good. So well, I mean, they had to change potentially it. as well, the 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 high pitched of the voice was because his voice is masked, his mouth is masked. So obviously right. when people are speaking normally, you, you still look at their lips to work out exactly what's going on. So I guess the high pitchedness is separate enough from the size of him that you yeah. take in the words. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let's see. Nina has a question for you. He goes, can you ask James, can imag imagining Charlie Hunnam as the new Bond? I like Charlie Hunnam. Can you I'm see him as the new Bond? Uh, I'm a big Sons of Anarchy fan. Me too. Uh, I think he's exceptional in Sons. I don't think he gets the film roles that he deserves, but like I think uh, in Sons of Anarchy, he's great. He'd be a great Bond. He'd be really cool. There's a movie out there that uh, for the past 38 years, uh, Nina Lusik's been trying to get me to watch a movie called The Gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe 50 years? I'm not, <laughs> I keep up, upping the years. Uh, but I will watch it, Nanan. I promise I will. Uh, but he said that uh, I guess Charlie Hunnam in that movie, I guess he's wearing a suit or something like that. Yeah. He looks some, good. some people were saying, hmm, could he be a Bond in the future? Yeah. Of course he he's a good actor, Charlie Hunnam, and he's very cool. He's they very need to, but they need to fix Bond first before they pick a new Bond. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they need to figure out what they're doing with Bond first before they start casting a new guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I suppose it depends where. I mean, the Casino Royale was such a departure from everything else. Yeah. I guess do you follow on and keep doing this, or do you change it up completely? And I mean, right. I guess you can't go too tongue in tongue in cheek because Kingsman has now taken that spot. That's true. Uh, the kind of Roger Moore kind of Bond. Yeah. The Roger Moore era. Yeah. There's some good stuff in Roger Moore era, though. Yeah, I like Roger Moore, man. He's cool. Yeah, he's fun. Yeah, I mean, uh, For Your Eyes Only was good. The Spy Who Loved Me. 
It's, it was just one of those he kind of stayed Bond too long. That's all. Yeah, I mean, what was like, the one where he was? Uh, he he was dressed as a crocodile. <laughs> I don't remember. I love that I one. Think, I think he was dressed as a crocodile, or he beat up a crocodile, or he was dressed as a crocodile, and then he appears and he's in his suit and he looks amazing, and you're just kind of like, <laughs> I, can do this. I can't remember, but I know he dressed up as a clown in Octopussy. He had a <laughs> clown outfit. James Bond running around like with a clown outfit, which was funny. Yeah, you um, won't get Daniel Craig doing that. I don't think that. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Uh, Charlie Hunnam as Bond, but have Guy Ritchie direct. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on the Guy Ritchie Sherlock Holmes movies? I love the the, the, the first one. I thought was amazing. Aren't uh, they fun it. though? Yeah, it's really fun, and um, he really translated his style into a different era, which is really yeah. cool. I mean, I remember that opening. Uh, you know, the fight where. Robert Downey Jr. Because it's usually a, an older guy with his pipe solving crimes and stuff. But this was like, you know, Sherlock Holmes in a, a brawl, uh, topless and kind of like, and that whole breaking down of when he was uh, yeah. taking apart how the fight is going to go. I yeah. thought, was, I mean, it's quite, you know, revelatory when you watch it in the cinema. You're like, wow, this is super cool. I'm yeah. really into this. I've seen that quite a few times. I really enjoy like, it. Uh, and you got to love Mark Strong. You yeah, know, Mark I love Mark. dude. If you can get him in a, in one of your movies, that'd be dope too. One day, he's a great actor. They have, have him. Ever, in. Have you ever seen Our Friends in the North? No, no. So Our Friends in the North was a show in the nineties, and it's Mark Strong, Daniel Craig, Chris Eccleston, and Gina McKee, and it's the show that blew up all their careers. It's unbelievable. Like the acting is sublime. That so it's one of the best shows I think British television has ever put out. Can you buy that on like DVD or anything? Yeah, yeah, I think it's BBC, so you can just grab it on DVD. Okay, okay, cool. I'm gonna have to look out for that. Yeah, wow, <sighs> talk about a killer cast right there. Yeah, that's I've, good. I've been I've been a fan of Mark Strong ever since Kick Ass. <laughs> 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 and it's just he's so, and after that, he's just so good as a villain and everything. Like, yeah, he's just so good. And um, you know. I, and, the, and that part in Shazam, where have you seen Shazam? I haven't seen it yet, but I've seen the trailer with him in it. Okay, there's there's one scene. It's a minor spoiler, but it's one of the funnier parts of the movie, where you know you always have cliche villain speeches, right? Like I'm gonna talk to the superhero, but he, and they're like far away. Yeah, you will never defeat me. <laughs> you, know, you get those type of speeches, right? But what was so funny was in the movie when he did it, he's like far away. Right, because they're in the, they're they're flying up and fighting in the air. Yeah. And then at one part, one part he's far away giving his speech, so he's doing the big villain speech, and then it cuts to Shazam, and he's all like, "I can't, I I can't." <laughs> I, I... <laughs> <It's so funny. laughs> and he's all quiet. <laughs> you can hear him far away. He's all quiet. <laughs> but yeah, Mark Strong is he's great. And for, in the first Kingsman movie, he you know he's great and he's great in yeah. that. You know. Uh, but yeah, more more Mark Strong. Speaking yeah. of speaking of villains, I have to ask you since you're a filmmaker. Uh, I talked to Chet a little bit about it the other day this week. But thoughts on the Cruella trailer? Uh, I haven't watched it yet, so I've, I've seen the pictures and stuff, but I haven't haven't seen it. Um, it's weird. It's almost like Disney's Joker. Yeah, it looks really adult from the little sections I've seen it. And it's a, uh, don't know. It looks kind of, yeah. I don't know if they're pushing Disney to a more adult space. Uh, is it? Is it just like because of the success of Maleficent? Well, let's try it with another um, villainess, maybe. Yeah, potentially. I mean, I guess there's a, I don't know. There's a whole movie to make of. I think they did it as a cartoon, but you know, all the villainesses like a Expendables with Disney. <laughs> so what's next, Jafar? Jafar, <laughs> Jafar, the movie this summer. By Terry Crews. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the greatest movie ever. Now, <laughs> uh, Longer and his Ursula from the Little Mermaid, <laughs> and you just go through like that. Uh, I mean, I'd watch that film. I'm not going to lie, I would watch that film. The Expendables play Disney. <laughs> that would be cool as shit. Dolph Lundgren as Ursula. <laughs> Uh, any chance of maybe in the future getting Dolph in one of your movies? Oh man, I'd love Dolph. I'm a huge Dolph Lundgren fan. Yeah. Uh, he's in three of my favorite films of all time, which are oh, The let's, Punisher, let's, 
go. Well, let's go. What we got? Punisher, uh, Rocky IV, Masters of the Universe. Yes. 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 He, he is cool. He's played three iconic characters. He's cool as shit. And he's super intelligent. Yeah, seen his images. Yeah. Just a really nice, really nice guy. Really smart. Mm. Like, insane. He's like he's a, really a doctor, right? He's like a scientist. Uh, yeah. Uh, something like yeah, he's it's, super it's ridiculous. Smart. Yeah. And he's a badass, too. He's a real life badass. badass. I think, you know, and, he's super intelligent. So I think if I say, can you throw this dildo at someone, he'll be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dolphin dildos. This would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy sumo. Scrooge McDuck has an <laughs> action <for him>. <laughs> <laughs> Who uh, would play Scrooge? I know. Who would play Scrooge, chat? They'll, they'll would get that me? Malcolm McDowell. Mark, Mark, Mark Strong. Mark Strong. There you go. There you there go. You go. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, you used to get the rock as the three ducks, but CGI. <laughs> Huey, Dewey, and Louie well, played by The Rock. Well, if you have, I know you're extremely busy, um, but if I if I could pick a date, if you're down, we do have it. Is it really that bad episode planned for Masters of the Universe? Dude, I'm I'm, I'm willing to sit there and, and stick up for Masters of the Universe. Okay, because the the rating is atrocious. It's it, bad. It's, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassingly low. I, I think people are trolling it because it's clearly. An epically brilliant film. So uh, I'll, I'll hit you up. Like if you're, if you're, are you free on Mondays? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, we'd have to do it early though. Damn it, that's the only problem because I usually do those at six p.m. Well, so six p.m. Six p.m. here. It, well, what is it over there? Uh, I don't know. Is that like what are we now? Is it six p.m. Ten a.m. Like two a.m. Oh yeah, that's when I usually stream with like Ranji. Yeah, that might be tough for you. Damn it. We'll uh, see. We'll see. I mean, you know, I'm willing to step late if it's for Masters of the Universe, you know. Okay, <laughs> are you really to represent? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you posted. Yeah, uh, I think you need someone to stick up for it. Cool, cool. I'll keep you posted then. It'll be me <laughs> and uh, my buddy Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. So, yeah, yeah, that'll be fun, man. That'll be great to have you back to talk about that movie. Yeah, definitely. Conor McGregor as Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> <laughs> In an action DuckTales. That would be super cool. Yes. Like Liam, Neeson. Liam Neeson. Yeah, that would be cool, actually. That would really work. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of Liam Neeson, uh, what are your thoughts on the Naked Gun reboot? Is that what's happening? He's doing Naked yeah. Gun reboot. Oh, mm -hmm. man, that would be great. He's I hope, really funny. I hope it's good because it's kind of that, that type of comedy doesn't translate well to the today's audience, unfortunately. Yeah. I love it. I love the first two Naked Gun movies. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but it's difficult. Today it's offensive. Yeah. I mean, like, they, they were going to do... I think they might still be doing it with John Hamm because they were going to do Fletch with Zach Braff about 10 years ago. It never happened. And I think John Hamm is doing it now. Um, I mean, that's so 80s, and Fletch is really offensive. <laughs> so yeah. It'll be interesting to see how they do it. Um, right. But, I mean, Liam Neeson's funny as shit, so... Yeah, he can do it. Yeah. Have you I seen just... him in extras? I just hope the movie is funny. Yeah. There might be a lot of dead air jokes or I don't know. Like, are we going slapstick like the old movies? Like, what are we doing, you know? I mean, I saw, did you see Shaft? The new Shaft? The first Shaft remake or the... <laughs> or the <laughs> I, I really like the first Shaft remake. I, I think it's really cool with Christian, with Christian Bale, Bale and Sam Jackson. I think it's great. But the, the newest one where Sam Jackson has his son in it and he has no, his dad. I haven't seen that one. It's funny as shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's yeah. Good. It's, it's, it's really funny. Sam Jackson's super funny, isn't it? Okay. Um, so maybe, I don't know. What it depends did, how they push it, I guess. Why didn't they just call it Shaft 2? Or, or Shaft it's, something? It, it's tonally really different. Oh. Yeah, it's tonally, it's like completely different to the first one. Hmm. But I mean, I think the Shaft was Shaft and Blade were the first two DVDs that I bought. Nice. Nice. Mine, mine was Spawn. Here, here you go. Here's my. Uh, there was Blade with no DVD yet. All right. So leave me alone, chat. <laughs> mine. It just shows my. Uh, you know what was yours again? It was what? Shaft and Blade. Shaft and Blade. There yeah. you go. There, there you go. Right there. That shows the 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 open mindedness that you have. <laughs> right? 
So here's here's my here's my example. First two DVDs I ever bought, Spawn and Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's way good apart in genres, <laughs> but it's it's all good because we like we like it all. You yeah, I would, I would like to see more Spawn with Michael J. White. Michael J. White's badass. Yeah, we we kind of talked a little bit. Yeah, I met I met him uh, several times. I got my photo with him. Very very nice guy. Yeah, I've seen interviews. Yeah. He comes across it again, super intelligent, really nice guy. Seems very centered and like you know knows his shit. But he's yeah. he's badass. Yeah, like he's I would cool. love to have him on the channel, and maybe in the, maybe in one day. I don't know. Maybe in the future, mm -hmm. I can get him on here. Uh, but um, yeah, great guy. But yeah, we, we were recently talking, me and me and chat, and some other people. I had guests that I had on here, and it was just like it might have been Ranjit as well too. But it was just kind of like, what are they doing with this new Spawn movie? Was it going to take like 50 years before this new Spawn movie comes out? It's just like, what's happening? And then yeah, and then know. the plot synopsis, Todd McFarlane told Michael Jai White just, just for fun. Right. Michael Jai White's not a part of it. They, I think they, they wanted Jamie Foxx. Yes. <clears throat> and he told Michael Jai White what the movie was going to be. And Michael Jai White said, good luck with that. <laughs> And I just don't understand, especially when the superhero genre is so big and popular now. The superhero films yeah. have become our summer blockbusters. Yeah. You know? Um, and it's just weird the the take he was trying to do with it. Have you heard his what he was trying to do? Well, no, I was, I was reading that he's um he's really opening taking ownership of the universe and really opening it up with characters and different strands of story, like with the graphic novels and the comic books. So it seems yeah. like it's proper going to push for its own universe that can be its own linear thing right um, which is pretty cool but i mean was it a much darker version or was it it was supposed to be darker and r-rated which we're for yeah i mean remember the the animated show that was on hbo that was great yeah that was really good but um it's it, it the, the plot as far as the, the concept is spawns barely there right you don't really see spawn it, you're kind of following Sam and Twitch's characters for the pr police precinct, and they're going on trying to solve these murders. And it's through their perspective. And you'll see Spawn once in a while, but he'll come in as kind of like mist or kind of like a supernatural element where he, where he kills you know the bad guys and he disappears. Right. Kind of like a horror thriller mystery, cop mm -hmm. thriller. And I'm like, this sounds good for a TV show, not a movie. Yeah, it's a it's a long. Yeah, this sounds like an interesting series. Yeah, not a film franchise, and that maybe that's what's lagging. Maybe that's why it's taking so long because producers and they're like, "What is this? Wait, we're making a movie about a superhero, but he's barely in the movie. Like that? How yeah. do we sell that?" That's difficult. I mean, if he's barely in the movie as well, I guess you struggle to push a trailer because it will be yeah. just the bits that he's in. You know, but I mean, as 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 much. You know, as cheesy and as much flack the original gets, and everybody in the world hates the original except for me. I'd rather have Spawn with his blade out, yeah. stabbing Violator in the top of the head in a CGI hell. Yeah. I'd rather have that than just Spawn not even there. And he comes out as mist and oogly boogly moogly and then kills some villains, and then that's it. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't I mean, know. Is it going to have John Leguizamo again? Because I love that character. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And a lot of people give Leguizamo shit for, for, for his character as Clown. It was like, you know, Clown acted that way in the comics, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great performance. And yeah. It's, uh, it's really, really creepy and scary. And, you know, for a comic book film, it's yeah. freaking freaks you out. Even in the cartoon, Clown was over the top. Mm. So I thought yeah. I thought Leguizamo was really good as that, as that character, you know? It's, so films that are so bad, they're good. Have you done um, The Pest? I've never seen it. No way. It's John no. Leguizamo, basically. Is, is a um, kind of stand-up show, but as a film, it okay. is insane. Really? really funny and really, not PC, but really insane and crazy. I remember I remember the poster with him smiling on there. Yeah, top shot. Like yeah. <laughs> Just for shits and giggles, let's see what our favorite Rotten Tomatoes place uh, gave it here. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> wow. Wow, this makes sense. This makes sense. Are you ready? 
Yeah. Critic score, eight percent. Whoa. Eight. Jesus. Audience score, sixty-eight. There we go. There it is. See. Yeah, I love I, it's 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 crazy and mental and just like it's like hard target but with comedy. Uh, it's, yeah, it's about him getting hunted down. It's like insane. Cool. I'm gonna have to check it out. There you go. We got some pest fans right here. There you go. There we Boom. go. Very underrated. But yeah, I'm sure you have a lot of ideas. So just make, give me a little message, you know, whatever you <laughs> free, and I'll mark it on the calendar, man, and we'll we'll get together and do these. It'd be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Do these? Is it really that bad? Episodes. Let's see. And we we might start some. Is it really that good? Ah. Uh. Episodes too. Yeah, that might be uh, something we're gonna. Well, that might be. It's gonna happen. Yeah. I'm just waiting for because uh, I I wasn't paying for it. I wasn't buying it, and it's cool if you love it, James. <laughs> love it for you, man. It's cool if you love it, but our uh, my buddy Rob from Entertainment Talk Nation has been torturing me and my wife about it. So he's like, "All right, we're gonna do it." Is it really that good debate video? And uh, I was like, "Well, I'm not paying. I'm not paying for it." And so he bought it. He's so desperate for us to do this video together that he actually paid for the Blu-ray. He's mailing it to us. But Avatar. <laughs> Is on its way, and that'll be the first movie that we kick off. Is it really that good episode? So it'll be interesting. Uh, but uh, yeah, a lot of fun things for the channel, and a lot of great things for you, my friend. I'm, I'm very happy for you. Thanks, I think it's probably a perfect time to kind of wrap things up here. It Sweet is an honor to have you on the show, and it'll be an honor again to have you come back. I'll keep in touch about the Masters Universe thing. We're gonna make it happen. Yeah, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. And it's going to be great. Uh, chat had a blast here uh, watching uh, the stream today. Had a lot of people show up just to hang out and talk movies with us, which is what we love doing because we love movies. And I'm I'm just a schmuck, man. I'm just here to talk about movies and be a knucklehead. And I appreciate all the likes and shares and all you guys watching. I do. But this man over here, that's right. No. <laughs> He's living the dream. He's living the dream. He's getting his feet wet. Knuckle dust. Make sure you guys check it out. That's only his second movie. That's just only his second movie, which is insane. So he's on his way. And a future, don't forget, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs movie is confirmed. He's working, <laughs> he's working on it. And the, the, the sequel to Frozen 3 will be the <laughs> next Knuckle Dust movie. And uh, John Wick don't want none of this. You know what I'm saying? John Wick don't want that. Back it up, Keone. Back it up, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's a perfect time to wrap it up. Any any questions for me or for chat or anything, Mr. Mr. Kermack? I'm good, man. That was uh, good. Really, I really enjoyed that, man. Hey, it was a blast having you, man. Like I said, mm -hmm. we'll do way more. You're always welcome anytime to come on. Thanks, uh, but chat, don't forget, uh, Monday isn't really that bad. The Phantom with Billy Zane discussion. Uh, maybe James might show up. I don't know. He might show up. We'll see what happens. It's a great film. Though. I'm sorry. <laughs> he, might, he might show up uh, 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 sooner. Uh, Rolicon says, can he be an extra in your movie? <laughs> Always need extras, man. Always need right? Extras. Right? Need boys, man. And uh, let Tombstone and Rawbone know, you know, that I'm fans of theirs, and don't kill me if they see me in real life. Uh, well, wait to see how this interview went. Uh, it went well, so you're fine. It's good. <laughs> okay, cool. It's like, you talk shit, man. You give me yeah. his I'll me call his him now. It's fine. Leave his door. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm good, man. Yeah, have a good night, okay? All right, boys. See you later. So it's all good, man. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, this was a blast, my friend. Don't go anywhere. Uh, but chat, don't forget, Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, is it really that bad? The Phantom and got more things coming for the channel. A lot of good things. Don't forget Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific time versus episodes on Top Gun versus Iron Eagle uh, will be a fun debate. There will only be one winner. And uh, I'll be uploading the poll uh, to have you guys vote as well, uh, the Movie Dojo Army. But yes, uh, thanks again for watching. Until next time, chat. See you badasses again. That's right. And... Now the real hunt begins. All right, guys. <laughs> Take care. Don't go anywhere, James. <laughs>